Hey everyone, welcome to Edge of Legend, the Pathfinder second edition homebrew show with a, a wonderful world to show you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, off the top, thank you so much for Manor for the win for those amazing subs. Thank you for the awesome raid dice drink drama. It's always awesome to see you and I hope you guys coming along. Uh, enjoy what you see. Today's going to be an interesting game. Uh, cannot wait. Uh, we're going to do a quick introduction to everyone you see here, do a brief recap, and then get right down to it because... Uh, my, my players are a wee bit nervous about the puzzle that is awaiting them at the beginning of this game. So without further ado, Sydney, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Well, hello there. My name is Sydney. I play Alona, and my pronouns and her pronouns are she, her. Alona is a half-elf cloistered cleric uh, wh who should be good at puzzles, uh, but Sydney is not. So we're going to see how this episode goes. Absolutely. Also, Archives of Nethys in the house. Great to see you. I love your website, your knowledge base, and your catalog is brilliant. Thank you so much for being here. Um, without further ado, let's move right along to uh, Mr. Michael Powell. Tell them who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Well, I am Michael Powell, and um, my social media hat is uh, at Mr. Powell. That's M-R-K-A-P-A-O. Or also, I'm playing the Fabulous Rufa. Wait. And uh, yeah, my pronouns are he, him, they, them, and the same for Rufa. Excellent. Excellent. Next up on the list, Kylie, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kai. It really doesn't matter at this point. I play the Elven Ranger, Shionabis, and we go, blah, blah. we both go by she, her. Nice. All right. Next up, Sam, tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hello, I am Sam, and I play Ichipoktan Papakui, the barbarian, and uh, I am good at puzzles, but Ichi has been described as kind of dumb, so we'll see how those things play together. And our pronouns are she, her. What, what, why is Ichi described as dumb? I would I described never Ichi myself as kind of dumb <laughs> and she was like but you did say that she was the l woods yeah of wrestling so like maybe eh? you're onto something i think you're onto something eh. yeah. all right so uh without further ado ian tell us who you are who you're playing and what your pronouns are my name is Ian. I'm playing Woodwart, the Gnome Druid, and also rolling for my best friend, Mush. And our pronouns are he, him. Nice. My name is PJ. I'm the GM of Edge of Legends and Nat20 Productions. My pronouns are he, him, and I'll be playing everyone in between. And uh, welcome to Edge of Legends. Have happy uh, uh, Trans Visibility Day. And without further ado, here's the recap from last week. Also, if you haven't had a chance, go to our YouTube. Sydney did a bang up job. Go check it out. Uh, but basically, we've been on this, uh, what the goblins are referring to as a, uh, a, was it a big rock double hard boat. It's a big steel boat. It's about three or four stories, and the whole thing has been turned into this abomination of, of mutants and, and mutated goblins all working for the leader of this boat. One Dr. Manglemaw, this evil goblin mad scientist. Now, they last episode were able to figure out that there is indeed a puzzle, a lock mechanism that Manglemaw has hidden himself behind. And in order to open it, they need three power cells, which Manglemaw has decided to color code for the ease of his, as he views, less intelligent co workers. After causing a fight between staff and one of them getting uh, in a fight to the death and being beaten and killed and then promised to, to regenerate back to life. Uh, they get one that way. They get another power cell from one Dr. Ickius C. Boomglass, who uh, gave it to him in exchange for letting him become the uh, head scientist once Mangle Maw is defeated, destroyed, or dismembered. And last but not least, the other one they found in a crude room that Manglemaw nicknamed the Sponge Dungeon because it's where he sends all of his ooze creatures for testing. Uh, and an old familiar face who had been experimented on was delightful enough to retrieve this power cell from a live grid of electricity. 
<laughs> the uh, that is the international sign of uh, Jeremy, who just wants a you know a little bit of compensation. Uh, he came back all the way from Cobbledale in the first couple episodes. If you haven't seen that, give it a shot on YouTube. Um, and now here we are, the third floor, the final bottom floor. And I want to start today's episode with everyone giving me a perception check. Right into it. Here we go. Here we go. Dun, 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 I got dun, a dun, 17. Dun. 17. 21. 21 from Spid. Nice. 18. Her. Michael, what's your perception check? You did. Uh, dirty 20. Dirty 20. And last but not least, Kylie. What, Kylie, what is your perception check? 27. 27. I need to roll Morel's perception check as well. I'm really hoping how horrible Bubble Boil is going to be able to help us out with this one. <laughs> with the puzzle or with the thing I'm making you roll perception checks for? Uh, all of it. Mm. <laughs> gonna mm -hmm. beat Kahor, but with a knife. All right. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you want to okay, so uh, I need to know what size. Uh, actually, no, wait a minute. Okay, so as you're entering the bottom floor, you see that massive steel door. I mean, the place looks like a vault, a bank vault, if you will. Here's my amazing drawings uh the bank vault right here the bank vault has a massive open panel where you saw the device from last episode i'll show you that in a minute however sydney kylie michael and morell you hear a rather ominous sound start to rev up by the door the door itself, again, massive metal structure, easily 100 feet tall. It's probably five to 10 feet thick of solid steel. This thing's a beast. But you're hearing this, and if you weren't paying close attention, you would almost assume it's just the buzzing hum, the ambient noise of this metal boat that's just alive with electricity. Now, those who succeeded, I will give a bonus on what's coming next. So here's what's going to happen. Starting off with Sydney. Sydney, what size class is your character? Medium, small, large? Medium. Medium. Okay. What's your AC? 14. 14. Okay. Well, even if I gave that the plus two, this is going to happen. So... Mark Sydney really fast. Uh, what size category is Woodward? <laughs> well, he's really large for a gnome, but he's still small. Still small? I will be no rolling nothing against Woodward. Michael, what's the size category of Rufa? Medium? Medium. All right. What's your AC? Uh, let's see here. AC right now is a 20. 20. All right, so the plus two, that would make it a 22 for mm -hmm. this purpose. And marking Michael. Shunimus, how tall are you? Are you a small, medium, or large creature? Medium. Medium, okay. What's your AC? 19. 19 with a plus two, that's 21. Unfortunately, that's gonna still mark you. Uh, Ichi, are you a small, medium, or large size creature? Medium. Medium. What's your AC? My AC is 18. Okay, so that's going to hit you as well, marking you and Morel. <laughs> Morel, you, you thick. You know you thick, boy. But that's a critical one, so nothing. So, suddenly, uh, four people. Okay, Morel is going to use a quick reaction. One, Sydney. Two, Michael. Three, uh, Kylie. And four is Sam. Two, Michael. All right. Suddenly, the worm gets louder, and you see these massive metal sheets just fly out of the wall. 
and suddenly a steel barrage of buzz saws come flying in packs of three. Thankfully, they can only target a creature medium or higher. And Woodward is standing there as his hat gets nicked on the tip. That's a, that's I'm counting that as assault. And uh, whoever's behind the door, we're going to get him. All right. So that being said, this is a trap by the goblins called the Double Tall Half Maker. Those who I marked, you took critical damage. I didn't roll anything under a 16. So, <clears throat> without further ado, and I'm very sorry, these blades slam into your body with great abandon, but I rolled bad. Sydney, you are going to take six damage. Uh, Michael, as, as this blade is coming at you, you suddenly are eclipsed by this large shadow, and you see Morel puts his shield up in time to deflect 11 damage from you. You take no damage. His shield doesn't look great, but you're fine. Kylie. Oh, 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 I am rolling bad. You're going to take uh, five damage as these buzzsaws just, just rip by you. Last but not least, Sam. You take nine damage as two of these buzzsaws rip by you. Woodward and Mush are unaffected and unharmed. Meanwhile, Morel, a little late to respond, is in the front, basically having a bunch of blades just reflect off his shield. This is bad. Happy episode 37! Um, <laughs> I think... Uh, ha how's Ichi looking? It hurts! Okay. <laughs> That's what I Ichi, thought. Yeah. Ichi's going to drop prone uh, just with the idea that if more of these come out, maybe she won't be that much of a help with um, solving this problem, but she won't get her little pigtails cut off. Yeah. I No. Ufa behind Morel's shield just looks at Gruko and goes, so my friends... What say we go home? <laughs> <laughs> you suddenly hear Morel go, uh, uh, I hate to be a bummer, but I think I just heard a, a reloading mechanism fire into the door. There might be another barrage. We have to dismantle this trap immediately. Can we army crawl? Can we low crawl to the door? <laughs> Give me an acrobatics check because you gotta <laughs> dive fast and crawl. Um, could... Rufus gonna drop prone as well, but I was wondering if I could use. I think I could have an action where I could use it and just to check for traps, like like how the trap works, at least in his Rufa brain. For sure, give you a perception check, uh, and basically what I will do is I will allow you to grant you and other people in the party a plus one to dismantle this trap as okay. you kind of Sherlock Holmes your way through it. Uh, okay. That being said, while you're rolling that, I saw an excited look from Sydney's face. What's that roll? The reason that I got excited is because my acrobatics is a plus one and I rolled a 17. So it's an 18, which oh. is way better than it could have been. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I rolled one of those too, just because uh, I think Ichi's going to get that same idea. And that was a 27. 27. Uh, Kylie, 27 uh, is what? No, 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 no. Same uh, as in same idea. But I got okay. a 17. Okay. Uh, my, Michael, is your perception check? Quick question. Does my trap sense work? Uh, does it combine with this? Yes, it does. Good, because I got a nat 20. Nice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so does that plus one help? <laughs> yes, oh, it's, always. It's, always. Why not? So your brain, you start hearing this, you're like, it's almost like you can hear time stop, like choo, 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 choo. <laughs> And, and your brain starts going, 
lock, pin, spring, mechanism, two bits of metal, charging by the sound of the charging. There's absolutely a force of electricity moving through these at just the right amount of space to make a charge capable of propelling these things faster than anything that we saw in the Black Powder Cannons back home. This is a clean weapon. Magnified clean weapons. This these blades are being produced somewhere on the ship and perfectly meticulated to the slit in the front door with a local mechanism for weight and height. There's a pressure plate by the front door. And suddenly a bunch of these blades start spitting out again. Relaying all this information to everyone, as you as you kind of go from like your Sherlock Holmes brain to back to real time, you see Morel just hunker down behind the things, ding, 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 like almost being knocked back into you as you're basically getting beaten by like rail spikes. Um, uh, everyone gets quick, a plus one to break this thing open. A little quick. Also, the group will also give because I relay the information. It activates my. It activates my trap card. No, it activates ah, my. Uh, part of green. My clue in ability, which gives uh, everybody plus one as I relay the information to them, because it's a. Uh, the it works off of my pursue the lead. Oh. All right, I will give that as a total <laughs> plus two with pursue the lead and your ability to basically Sherlock Holmes this this Moriarty business. So, pressure plate. Dad, Dad, pressure plate. So everyone, all the, the three ladies drop to the ground, and you start just huffing it. Morel is at the front point, just taking a beating, and he's like, I don't know how much the shield's going to last. Meanwhile, Woodward, Mush, and Cahubber Bubble Boil are just sitting there. You just you see Bubble Boil like take out a flask and just casually drink it as the blades are flying over her head, completely fine. She's like, that's why we make this for non-goblins. If you're too tall, not anymore. Quick question, PJ. Um, the pressure plate, is it against the wall or is it on the floor itself where it needs to be pressed down? The pressure plate is a mechanism by the door. However, it's got a, a built-in mechanism to the pressure plate that can read height and someone's being there. This is all just mechanic fluff for basically stating knowing how it works is giving you a bonus to break it. Yeah, because if possible, Rufa wants to relay the information to Chonabas, see if she could actually just shoot the shoot one of her arrows yep. to activate that pressure plate thing. And that way we want to be close to it, just in case there's a backup trap. We are on the same page. Mm -hmm. All right. So you all are able to, to basically army crawl your way to the door. Now the buzzing sound is atrociously loud. It's this bandsaw against steel. You can hear the screaming as of metal as it's being torn and sparks are flying from inside this door. And you can hear the next, another valley, uh, sorry, volley of blades being prepped for another blast. And Morel is like, shield's getting really weak here, guys. Y'all need to break this on this turn. Uh, I am immediately pulling out an arrow Docking it. We're just gonna point, and she's kind of where over there, over there, with the over there. Kana's also aid. <laughs> <laughs> over I, there, they're, they're already getting a plus two. They're pretty stacked. Fair enough. Fair enough. I love your hearts out, but I, I, not this time. So, uh, you guys have one action. The question is, what skill check? What action are you taking? You can do a thievery to try and dismantle it. You can just hit it and try to break it with raw force you can use any other skill check you'd like if you are creative enough and make a good argument maybe i'll accept it but the choice is yours ladies the safety of the beefy acadian and and the wisecrack and rufa is honestly up to you so what do you do well hold on hold on i'm still there yeah but you're I, you're fine I can, I can do something <laughs> what do you want to do what do you want to do again what, what do you want to do uh well you said uh Specifically that we know that this is run with electricity, correct? Of some sort. Uh, Rufa pointed that out to us. Yeah. Um, I want to shoot an electric arc at the machine. Hoping for maybe some sort of short. Okay. Smart. I will absolutely allow that. Um, I will put one small penalty to hit on that because you're shooting Fair. into your friend's area. Oh. So just a minus two. Well, guys, it's a minus two, and if I hit one of you, I also have the possibility of hitting one or two targets. So, <laughs> <laughs> And if he crit fails, he will hit both of you. Woo! 
Uh, yeah. Um, Inspiration point. <laughs> uh, Woodward. Um, I think he's just kind of acting at this point. He's too scared to say anything, and that's probably why he would get the negative two. It's because he's not warning anybody before he shoots this uh, bolt of electricity at the door. Um, more kind of like a freight, a scared animal rather than a. Oh wow, that was uh really close to hitting a lot of you guys. Um, I got a let's see, I got an eleven to hit total because I rolled a two. Okay, which is really close to just blasting you guys away with some lightning. <laughs> Thankfully, you are rolling to hit a massive door, uh, so that will hit. But you're gonna have to bypass all that steel. Roll damage, and there. thankfully no one else is getting hurt. Um. Wow. Uh, I got six damage total. Okay. So, as you all are hunkered by the door, and you can tell the next volley is going off, you see suddenly this bolt of electricity just basically uh, it cracks and breaks and streams and then collides back with the door. You can hear the solid pound of lightning. And as the lightning fades, there's a scorch mark and a slight dent. And the buzz saws keep spinning. Oh, come on! <laughs> as Woodward like starts walking towards the door. Can I aim an arrow for that? Okay, first, hold on, backtrack. For the door where it's mm-hmm. dented, is there any part on any of the corners that's lifted that's caused by the dent? So you're saying at uh, the dent made by Woodward, Woodward's dent? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, okay. Avoid the frequency scale. <laughs> uh, I am going to fire two arrows and hit. One of them will be to the dent. The other one will be if any of the corners are lifted after the first arrow. Okay. Roll the hits and then do damage. It's going to be a 25 to hit. That's a crit. Give me double damage on that. I mean, technically, it's a wall. Eh, I'll allow it. I was like, I'm, I'm, don't take I this away you. from me, PG. You said this door was 100 feet tall? Yes. How tall is this boat? It's massive. Max for one. That's only one level. <laughs> is it blocking a canal? The Evergreen. <laughs> we shall rename her. <laughs> I mean, it's full of goblins. Might as well call it the ever, the evergreen. Sydney, That's twenty uh, damage. Sorry, say uh, I almost called you Salem. Thank you, my brain. I swear to God, Sam, you get a hero point. Twenty damage is awesome. You actually start oh, to see. Oh wait, I forgot to add my decks. That's twenty-four damage. My bad. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, wisdom modifier or dex modifier? Because I think you can only add your wisdom. Dex. For my arrow. Yes. I have for. Dex for a crit. That's, I think, to hit. I'm, yeah, Dex is to hit. I believe damage is only a uh, wisdom modifier because of the ring that you got. Uh, yeah. Then 22. Still not bad, though. Okay, and you can double that wisdom modifier as well on a crit. So uh, you fire your, your arrow. It hits the metal, and you can actually see the, the dent that would work put in there start to really cave through and you see a small uh, hole as you've perforated through the first layer of steel. Sick. The second arrow is going to be the opposite corner to try to just pop it off. Okay, Uh, roll to hit with minus four. That's not, that's, no. No? No, that's like a nine. Okay. Uh, It kind of skims along the wall and, and lands definitely on the ground, but you put, you were able to punch a nice hole into the steel wall with Woodward's help. Um, so you, if you need to gain access inside that way, you can do that. The trap is slowly being broken. That being said, Sam and Sydney, who wants to go first? Do you want to go, Sam? I have two ideas. Why don't I, I... Sure, 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 sure. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that pressure plate does Ichi get a sense from uh, Rufa's gesturing that 
if I disarm the pressure plate, it should turn things off? Um, mechanically speaking, yes. If you make a thievery check with a high enough DC, you can basically break the machinations of this trap. The pressure plate, the height reader, the whole shebang. So this trap stops. Uh, but if you make the thievery check and you don't succeed, that's one action. Uh, your action done before the next volley goes off and possibly breaks Morel's shield. What if I make a Ichi smash check? I, I mean, it. you have a very good smash check and a nice hole that Woodward and uh, Shonibus have done really good to create. I'll go for the hole. And I'm going to take out my axe. And I'm going to axe it to stop hurting us by hitting it really hard. All right, uh, go right ahead. Smashy, smashy. Uh, my camera can never show these right, but it is the octopus of the natural 20. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. Okay. So that's a 29 to hit. Awesome, yeah. Get those, get those crits out of your system now, please. Uh, all right, so you get to do double damage. Yeah, D12s. Give me my D12s. Alrighty. Saw a great meme this meme today. It's uh, from the office. It said, "Remember that new D? Remember that new uh, TTRPG phrase I taught you? Clickety clackety, roll to attackity." <laughs> I love. That. I like that. Cool. So that is um, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13. I feel like it's been so long since I've done damage. 13 plus four. 26? 26 no. damage. Is that right? No, that's not right. Is it right? I don't 13 know. 13 plus four? 13, oh, 13 plus 27. four. 27. 20. Wait, 13 27. plus four or 13 plus oh. 14? No, it's 13 plus 14. 13 plus four. 13 oh, plus four, four is 17. 17. Sorry, yeah, that's, I was off by a factor of 10. Got it. Thank you. It is quite all right. Uh, it is It is 8 o'clock at night, and we're doing math. It is. I have that problem, too. Uh, 17 damage. You slam this axe in. The teeny tiny hole clang, just breaks wide open. As it does, you're seeing that there is a mechanism behind it that has been dented a little bit. And you can hear this like, you know those old CD walkers we used to have back in like the early thousands? You know when you had like a, like a bad CD and it just skip and make that clicking, that ugly clicking noise? Yeah, see, all my millennials know what's up. Uh, yeah, that's the noise you hear, that horrible like click, 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 click. Like something's not, the machine is running, but something's out of place here. Now, very, very close. Since it's fully not dismantled yet, but it's so close to being dismantled, I will give anyone, <clears throat> Sydney, a plus four to a thievery check to finally put this poor trap out of its misery. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, okay. you can do this. Remember, you stole all that stuff from the orcs. You're off right. The altar. You were sneaky once. I was sneaky once. once. It could be twice. The My legend can continue. It twice. <laughs> My thievery modifier is a plus one. Now it's a plus five. You're right. You're That's absolutely right. Elona mm. is going to pull from her past experience as a sneaky boy. And um, and she's going to use her hero point. I was so hoping oh. for a nat 20. She's going to use her hero point. She's going to use her hero point. She's gonna get she 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 was concerned, but now she's gonna be fine because you wanna know why? You wanna know why? Because yeah. that's way better. Okay. Um math. Let me do math real quick. You said it's a, a plus four, PJ? Uh, yes, I'm. That is a dirty 20. Okay. The DC. To break this trap is a dirty 20 on the dot. As you, well, tell me the tale of how you dismantle 
the double tall half maker just in time as it's about to horribly overload its uh, blade circuit and would apply riddled morel. So um, Elona sees her her friends just doing all the things. Rufus shouting over there, over there. Shunavis shoots. Uh, Woodward shoots. Ichi smashes, and Elona's like, "Okay," and she goes in. And she reaches her hand up past the spiky bits and she reaches in and she just pulls out a bunch of wires. She just rips them out and she said, no. Cause she was gonna use, probably gonna try and see if you would let her use command to, to tell the machine to stop. But now she's just yelling no at it and um, destroying it with her. Not today, Ravon. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Not today, excellent. So you have successfully survived and dismantled the double tall half maker. And as soon as that, like, as soon as you rip that out, you hear the mm. kind of die down. And you can hear the spinning stop. And then, much like a bandsaw, there's that kind of horrible metal ring as the blade slows back down, the gears kind of stop. And you see Morel just like every muscle in his body is just tense. And then slowly he releases his muscles and he goes, by the passion for now, my shield is absolutely knackered. I need to take a few minutes to repair this thing. Um, so if you need me for anything, let me know. But if I don't repair this thing, I'm basically just a boxer. Phew. So I'm going to go take care of that now. He, he goes in the corner. He sits down, pulls out a, a kit, and he just starts like hammering away at this thing. Now that you have beaten the trap, you can get a good look once more at the only thing standing in the way of you, between you and Mangalmaw himself. Welcome to the puzzle of the boat. Okay. Now, okay. I will give you this. As you are looking at this, you can see crew draw a crew writing around it. Blue, yellow, red, purple, green, orange. As you see that, you see these two basically levels, you're looking at the two levels, they can move and spin independently of each other. Movement is part of this puzzle. Movement is also an option. Can you say those colors in order one more time? Absolutely. So around the outside of the panel, you see, um, let me do it this way, yellow, blue, red. Yellow, blue, red. So this is north, north is blue. This is west, yellow, <laughs> east, red, nothing on the south. Below it, written, is these colors, purple, green, orange. Oh. Now, oh, yeah, no biggie. Now, before we go into this, I'm, sh I'm sure you'll probably be able to figure it out pretty quickly. Before we go into this, uh, chat, uh, because this is a puzzle, uh, uh, what we're going to do is uh, my players will probably not be responding to chats. Uh, you are f feel free in the chat to discuss this puzzle as much as you want. I'll be looking at it, but unfortunately they won't be able to look at it until the puzzle is solved, just so that they can really uh, do all that. We miss so, you. Love you very much, but for the sake of this puzzle, I will be Overwatch on chat. Okay, so we got a big old circle. We got yellow, blue, red, and we got purple, green, orange. Who is an artist? Who is an artist that understands how the color wheel works? Not I me. Took I took a picture of it on my phone when PJ put it, put it up. Do what are the colors on the three batteries? We have um, red. yellow, red, and blue. I think. Okay. Red. Right. Yes, red, yellow, blue. Those are our batteries. So my thought, this is Kylie. Uh -huh. We have to take all the batteries that we have. They're going to then intersect with another battery we have to make either purple, green, orange all the colors combined with another color that we have make that mm -hmm. color does that all make sense 
That's true. Uh, that is true. Know. That is how color theory works. Yes. Um, that is good smart person do smart things. Am I allowed to pull out my color wheel? <laughs> <laughs> From uh, my art kit? <laughs> you can say no. If, uh, if you want to. Now, here's the thing. Remember, and I know it's hard to read. This unit in here mm -hmm. and this unit out here can move. If you notice, they are not connecting the small bit to the big bit. They are actually in neutral places. So in order to solve this puzzle, you'll have to connect the dots literally in this case. Uh, so the PJ. inside rotates yep. and the outside rotates or just the oh. inside rotates. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, uh, PJ, can I, I want to roll recall knowledge on thievery? If possible to get like a hint. Um, if that's possible. I, I don't, uh, I'm going to say no, because oh. I don't believe there's anything about thievery that would help you with this puzzle. At the okay. end of this, do we gain lore goblin bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Look, Good. look, the goblin bullshit was the friends you made along the way. Oh, fair. <laughs> Literally, actually. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Now, okay. So we need, to, I'm assuming we need to make purple. I, I, maybe this is in order. Maybe we need to do this in order. So we need to make purple first, then green, then orange. So purple is made by combining blue and red. Ichi's gonna say, yeah, I had a makeup artist once for one of my big matches where I had to get real fancy. And she taught me all about this. So like you said, we just need a little bit of blue, a little bit of red. We make purple. Oh, that's a lot better than my smash and berry story. You smash some berries? Yeah, they make all sorts of funny colors. <sighs> We like, know things. Well, yeah, We're we do. Good. We do. I don't know anything about juice tubes, though. Yeah. <laughs> so we have a blue battery. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Okay. What happens if we just stick it in the red slot right now? That would make sense, given that it's north. Is something going to explode? Well, I hold on. hope the not. Are the doohickeys in the middle connected? Maybe we like, can, hmm. Oh, if we have to turn it to activate it, are the colors gonna move? Uh, that's a good point, Ichi, you're right. So if, if, we're, working with, if we're working with that theory, then we should put, well, we, mm? Each is going to walk up to it and she's just going to like slightly try to rotate, not with like actually engaging it, but she's going to slightly rotate the inner part to see if, so what she wants to know is if she did rotate it, would the placement of where you put the batteries in now end up in a different spot? Let she doesn't want to fully rotate it. <laughs> right. One more chance look at this. So you can see there's kind of like a, a hand wheel here in the center. Okay. You have north, uh, I believe, west, and east. And these ones right now have one south, uh, north, east, and northwest. You, can, you know you can probably turn the handle about 45 degrees uh, in one direction per turn, like as in you're turning it. Uh, so this... Is where we are right now, and if you want to use the thing to turn it 45 degrees, you're gonna to have to let me know what direction. Uh, blue is north, so that would be clockwise or counterclockwise. Sorry, my middle finger. Uh, and that is kind of where you're at right now. Got it. So the batteries look like they go in the outside parts, like their holes look kind of like they're set, they're not the holes aren't gonna turn. No, just, just the knob, just, just the thing in the center right here. So Does Looking at the thing in the center, is there any indication of what seems like a, um, like it's not completely symmetrical. Hmm. My thoughts are that if they're purple, green, and orange, then we put the blue and the red to make purple first. See if we can turn the knob, see if that does anything. Or we might have to do all of them in order for it to totally turn. I don't know if this is an order thing or I don't know if this is a... 
we could definitely do that. Um, but before we do, whoever is going to go up there to activate said thing, Rufa is going to take his his uh, cane, use an interact action to turn it, change it into a long whip, and it's going to tie tie one end to whoever is going to go. So just in case if we need to pull back, we could just pull back. You mean pull back in. So someone almost dies because they did something? Yeah, wrong. or like a pit or something fall happens. It's fair. We have had an acid pit experience already. Wouldn't be the weirdest thing. What's mm -hmm. up, Ian? I see your brain moving. I'm trying to explain it like woodwork. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm. <clears throat> Wait. So the the wires that we saw earlier. They had to touch, right? They had to touch to get the electricity to go through them when we were messing with the batteries and such. So it only looks like the handle can touch two points if we turn it one way or another based off of the connector at the bottom and the two on the top. But... We have to have the battery linked in for whatever color we want the other one to point to. Does that make any sense? A little yeah. bit. Uh, yes. So if sense. we put the right battery in to make the colors like mushing the berries, well, we got to turn the handle in the middle to make sure that that power goes to the right place. So it's combining the colors to make the electricity go in the right direction. So right now it looks like if we move it counterclockwise, all three of them would be connected. Does that look right? It looks like it would it could be connected in three points, but yeah. it's gonna to connect to two two wires, and then one of the juice tube ports. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I think it's safe to say we can put one of the batteries in one of the places, right? Because we know those colors are set, but we should only put one in at a time. So let's put the blue and the red to make to make purple and we'll we'll twist the dude and we'll see what happens. And Rufus gonna make sure to tie one end of his whip around the person doing it. Who hey. took the blue battery, by the way? Because I have the red one and the yellow one. Uh, uh, I think it's Ichi, right? Because that's the oh, yeah. one that Jeremy pulled out of the Jeremy. wall for you. Yeah. <laughs> He's still alive, just so you know, just so everyone remembers. But much to Ichi's uh, <laughs> chagrin, possibly. Um, Ichi pulls out the blue battery. She's like, I don't want to get electrocuted again. I'm not feeling yeah. good. I don't, I don't want to bring up a sensitive subject, y'all, but y'all may be too tall for this. So... I don't, I don't want to bring up anyone's size or nothing, but if you could hand me the battery and if it's supposed to be a door for goblins, uh, I'll take a crack at it. It's a great idea. <laughs> um, Woodward uh, turns around and is like, now Bush, you see that guy over there? You know him, Morel. Go ahead and stand behind him. <laughs> And then he goes over to put the battery in. Oh, before he does, um, Rufus is going to tie the whip around um, Woodward first. Okay. Okay. So just so I can, can confirm from the deliberation, you are sticking which power cell into which coupling and are, have you moved the center wheel in one direction? No move for the center okay. wheel yet. Okay. I believe we are taking the blue juice tube Yes. Sticking it in the red juice tube coupling. Mm -hmm. And if, okay, 
I do have to say, if anyone's new to this episode, watch last one. That's why I'm saying juice tube. Uh, <laughs> that's not just an arbitrary choice. Uh, but to make the purple where it should go, it's Sydney's fault, by the way. Um, uh, well, sea beard. Uh, long story short, blue bat, red battery. No, excuse me. Blue battery, red port to make purple. Okay. You put the blue battery into the red port. As you you kind of click in the power cell, you can actually feel the coupling, the round coupling of that uh, infrastructure kind of spin and fasten, almost like screwing something in. And, and you start hearing this coming from that side of the wall. And suddenly a bunch of electricity starts firing out of the power coupling. It is static and it's all over the place. Uh, Rufa has a held action. He's going to yank you back ASAP pronto, uh, which is good because I'm going to give that basically uh, Rufa. Give me a reflex save to save him. All right. Okay, let's see here. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. Good. Check the DC here. You're going to be taking three electric damage as a spark kind of reaches out and zaps you in the finger. Um, Woodward and Rufa, give me an intelligence check, a craft check. Uh, Arcana check. All, all of them, or do we just choose one? Your choice, anyone. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I know what I did wrong. <laughs> um, and I don't know how we're going to fix it. Another okay. dirty 20, uh, 22. Oh. Okay, uh, dirty 20. What was yours, Ian? I have a crafting check, so I'm going to go with that. Um, total that would make a uh, 16. Okay, so um, 22 crafting for Michael. Great. Okay, so Michael, um, you're realizing that what you have done here is effectively created two parts of a three part system, and you have not given it uh, the, the, the landing effectively. Uh, so it's raw power being focused through the, the power coupling, the home joint, and it doesn't have a place to go. Uh, Woodward, you know how sometimes the water goes downhill, you know, streams all like trickling and whatnot, and, and you have not built a dam yet, and it just gets all over the place. It's a mess. Yeah, but yeah, you, I catch you. I didn't, yeah. I didn't dig the ditch just right. Yeah, you gotta dam it up, or else it's just yeah, gonna right, be a mess. Right. Okay, good, good. Uh, Rufa, I don't I got a I got an idea on this. Um see I don't think I dug the ditch right for the water to go where it needed to. Um well I think the juice tube's firing off a little early. Uh the mm, uh maybe how do we how do we get it out? Hmm. Well definitely we definitely cannot use uh any lubricant it's seems uh this whole thing's run by electricity so hmm um really quick uh does anything anybody have anything that's like rubber on them i have duct tape what duct would duct tape uh material actually i'm actually wondering i don't know this myself would duct tape material like conduct block? electricity yeah <laughs> The... Uh, give me, I mean, Ian, Ian, real life would know, uh, like so magic he... electricity, <laughs> magic duct tape. Uh, I'll tell you what, this is a fantasy world. So mm -hmm. I will say the duct tape, the duct tape of superior mending, uh, will give a bonus to an action, but it will not circumvent the problem. Hmm. Yes, and for what, whatever we do, we must make sure we are also grounded too. We don't want to, uh, well, sizzle. 
Hey, Roof, I really appreciate that point, but we're sitting on the boat, so how do you think we're going to get some ground? Hmm. That is true. Let's see. So. Oh, is... holy shoot. Ground. If we really need grounding, uh, oh, the warrior pulls oh. out his blanket and throws it down on the ground. <laughs> his grass blanket. All right. All right. Very smart. So you take out your patch of your patch of grass. You can change it to any material uh, you want right now is currently, uh, I guess, augmented for grass. Are you going to use that as a grounding so you don't get shocked to death? I'm going to make a good old dirt. Mm, I love it. Ooh, wouldn't sand actually work better or no? Ooh, uh, depend. Mm. I'll, I'll work, say that. I don't. Mm, that's a good question. I will say this. It will help you. Now the question, but the but the real question is, what are you going to do to fix the puzzle? Uh, and while you're thinking about that, big hi to the raid that came in. Tabletop rules, love you guys. Uh, friends of the show, and we hope you enjoyed. They're in the middle of a puzzle on this giant, uh, what the goblins have referred to as a double hard rock boat. It's actually a steel cruiser that doubles as a horrible uh, science lab for a terrible <laughs> goblin mad scientist. And they're currently trying to solve the puzzle to get into uh, the terrible goblin mad scientist. What what do you think perhaps hmm, we need to put all three in at once, maybe? Ichi hey. walks up and and says, So I guess so what you did wrong was we didn't turn the thing, right? Yeah, and I'm I'm worried about trying to turn it now. Yeah. And I'm worried about trying to get the battery out. And, well, before um, we tackle that, when we figure that out, we at least probably know which way we got to turn it. Right. Because if we turn mm -hmm. it counterclockwise, all three of them will be activated. But yellow can't be activated because yellow eyeshadow doesn't make purple. So we have to turn it the other way, right? And right, if we put right. the red in the blue, then we'll have two purples. Is that right? Hmm. So we turn it clockwise. The north and whatever the opposite of west is gets turned on and it's just purple. Does that make sense? And then we turn it off and set in the new batteries and twist it the other way or uh, another way. Maybe I, I'm with you on the point until we turn it off and it's only for the fact that I don't know if oh. there's a way off once it's got the batteries connected. So I think we got to figure out how to turn the center to connect it to all the right points and then put all the batteries in in the right order. Mm. Uh, really quick, PJ, can I, is it possible to roll a craft, craft check for recall knowledge to see if the mechanism, me, that the mechanism for that would be safe to like remove without getting shocked? Uh, actually, yeah, yeah, great question. Give me that uh, crafting check. Awesome. Really quick, uh, would Trap Sense give me that plus one bonus? No. No? Okay, then 24. Still a very good number. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you're looking this over and you you start to think to yourself with with the patch of grass being turned to dirt acting as a grounding on the steel boat mm -hmm. electricity wise you're probably safe however this power cell is now alive with with power with energy energy releases a ton of heat and you're going to have to protect your hands if you want to now grab this power cell again because that could be a lot of pain and mm. just to grab this live mm. wire real quick um um, Rufus gonna look over to Morel. Does he does he wear gauntlets? He wears metal gauntlets. 
if there is a way for us to cover those metal gauntlets with some sort of rubber material or uh he so he he you see he's got this special like ring he kind of like like has to unlock it so the wrist support releases uh -huh. and he slides his arm out and goes these are designed so that they anchor onto my wrist and forearm. Mm. The steel plating is to protect my bones and my knuckles. This gauntlet is designed so I can punch through a face with the same power as a mace. Huh, and that runs. But what you need to understand, mate, is that this is the only one like this in existence. Special order from Acadia. I don't have anything else but these for my hands. I just realized something. Rufa, his outfit, they do come with leather gloves. Leather, not rubber. Yeah, but I was wondering. Duct tape. If we could, that or also, if we could somehow, if uh, Alona Woodward has any magic that could freeze them, kind of. Uh, in insulate. Look, I'm cold. I can probably give you a little bit of help to figure this puzzle out. You know, good old, uh, good old pat on the back. Um. But uh, I'm talking about guidance. Uh, <laughs> but uh, other than that, here's the thing about nature stuff is a lot of it's conductive, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of it, I mean, all of it, really. It just kind of, it kind of does the electricity thing real good. And I'm worried about it now. And I'm not sure if I can help at this point, but I think I figured out the puzzle. <laughs> Maybe for the um, helping with electricity part, we poke it with a stick. Who has a stick? That works for a lot of things. Uh, uh, this immediately looks like wood work for the stick. I don't have it written down, I will be honest. But as far as the character goes. <laughs> I would say that there is a high chance that Woodward just has what could sadly be his favorite stick, which could be put onto this. Uh, um, and I don't know if PJ is going to allow me to have a stick in my backpack, but I do not have one said written down. You know, you do have a stick you forgot about. Oh, no. Um, yeah. So. I got it. So I do. I do got a stick. Um, um, but I kind I like it kind of like Morel likes his, uh, so, um, uh, I guess we could, I already gave my hat up, right? So I feel like we should use someone else's stick. Uh, Ilona is going to turn to Kahorba Bubble Boil. You, you, this is, this is science that you probably know a lot about, um, NPC that is a goblin scientist. Um, do you have any suggestions or rubber gloves or a rubber suit on you somehow, ma'am? Uh, no. That's valid. He's this is not mice and boat. This is his and boat, and we are blowing it up. Yes, I did not bring rubber gloves in for. I did not know you were working with this materialosis. I came here for boom booms, massive major boom booms, death boom booms. I did not come here to help dummy Charles with uh, your live wire compound mixing. No, but but but. Don't, don't be afraid. It only hurts once. Yeah. Shonabis, you should shoot an arrow at it. That seems to help almost any situation. Usually, yeah. But I mean, I don't know about this one. Like, oh, yeah. Why would you my stick? She's got a lot of little sticks. A lot of little sticks. Hey, those are precious to me. You got multiples of them. Well, Why do we ask the scientists too. to figure this puzzle out for us? She basically called us incompetent the other day, so... I called you dumb, not incompetent. Dumb means you can learn, incompetent means you cannot. Are you gonna sit there and help us? No. Of course not. 
bones. You know how hard making bones is? I mean, it's it's okay. That's really fun. But like that takes focus. You then see her conveniently pull out like seven vials and other vials and a Bunsen burner, and she starts to mix them. And she's like, "Do not interrupt me when I am pouring." And she's just pouring chemicals and other chemicals. Hey, Mush, I'm gonna need to ask you to be equally as far away from this door as you are of that goblin. Like, just <laughs> over that way. Just it doesn't. We're we're mixing. She's doing the explosives here, and the juice tubes are going hard. And I just don't want to. It... Thanks, bud. Mush nods his his nose in the air, and then he just starts like just chonk walking over to Morel, who's just like in the middle of fixing his shield. He sees him and goes, "Hi, oh, little buddy, how you doing?" And kind of gives him a little head scratch. And now, like, Mush just kind of floops his boot down, and he's just sitting there watching Morel hammer at this shield for like twenty minutes. Woodward, oh. you said you think you solved this. Well, yeah. Um... If I remember right, the uh, the the West says yellow, correct? Yes. And we put a blue in the red, right? Mm-hmm. For purple. Mm-hmm. And then what? So and the top one is what again? Yellow. Blue. Blue. North is blue. So. If we okay, you know what? It's gonna have to take. It's gonna have to take me just taking the first battery out, because I think we put them in the wrong order. <laughs> I think you're right. So, uh, yes. hey Rufa, um, you want to keep that whip handy? <laughs> Rufa nods. All right, he ties it one end to um to Woodward and just moves as. Would it be better for real quick? Um, would it be better for Woodward to be grounded on the sand or for Rufa to be grounded on the sand? I think. Um, well, if Woodward's on it, technically it would never get to you, but okay. it will travel through Woodward into the ground, which isn't much better. Um, because that's like getting hit by lightning and standing on the earth, right? Yeah, the best thing I could do is actually be suspended in midair to not be the closest thing to the ground but without a wizard that little uh, levitation thing doesn't really work out too well for us yeah. so i think i'm just gonna grab it and go for it and uh i'm gonna go with the goblin it only hurts once all right give me an athletics it check to grab it out as fast and as hard as possible oh my athletics is fantastic oh i'm gonna once again same trigger okay I'm going to send a quick prayer to Anubis. Oh, okay. That's what I'm talking about. 25. Yes. Okay. So you just you get your hands nice and wet. Uh, I forgot the principle, but basically, you know, water creates a barrier between you and heat, essentially. You nice and wet. You just reach it. You grab it as fast as you can, snatch it, and you pull it like a linebacker. Just Bow. Lime, well, line break, backers tackle. A full receiver. I don't know. I didn't do sports. I did theater. Sue me. So you grab it and you tuck it to your chest really quickly. You take one burning damage, only one from the initial impact of it slamming into your own chest. But Not you have bad. Your, but you have your power cell back, and the puzzle is at a net zero. It's back to start. Okay, guys. Uh, fresh start. Um, I'll, let me just get my water skin for a second <laughs> and just like pours it on his chest to like, as he's clutching this thing to just kind of like cool down whatever he's got. Okay. Now I think Ichi may be able to explain it to you guys better just for the fact that, well, I don't think any of you spend too much time mixing berries. You should have, it's practical knowledge, but. You guys just, I don't think you guys got around to it, but colors go, right? Um, some bad eyeshadow is going to occur, and you guys will understand yeah. that part. Yeah. Um, I think we need to stick the batteries in in the order needed to create each color when the connector is touching both of the juice tubes and the connector off to one side of said color. 
as in the wall says whatever color on either side and two of the connected juice tubes will send a uh, when the connectors touch will send a shock in that direction right so if we put a the two juice tubes that would make up uh, yellow correct that's one of the colors on the outside so the blue and the green and then turn it so the pointy bit that's pointing down right now is attached to the yellow side and the two bits on top that look like horns the goat shaped thing in the middle you got to take the horns and connect it to the top one and the bot and the side one to put the electricity off to the left does that make sense maybe a bit so we're putting the yellow one in first i think we got to spin it and then stick both batteries in to make the yellow color Let's do it. Okay. So you can only turn it in 45 degree turns one time per turn. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise with blue being north. So that's the 12 o'clock. So if you want to turn it, tell me what direction you want to turn it in. Clockwise or counterclockwise, 45 degrees. For reference, Here's the thing again. So this is 12 o'clock. Uh, let's see if I remember correctly. I think I said that this was clockwise and this is counterclockwise. Okay. Um, and because I'm going to be messing with the colors on either side, what's the colors to the west again in the east? One more time. Uh, Sorry. Sure. No, it's fine. Um, west is yellow. East is red. Okay, so what I th think has to happen is that we have to connect two of the top pieces. You see how it's three and then like the one at the bottom mm -hmm. is turning it once to my right. So that would be clockwise would attach the blue and the red. And then there's the point on one side that says yellow. That's what it would attach to, right? That little wire sticking out next to it. Oh, those wires are just for show. Those wires don't do anything. I, I can tell you that because it's a no way part of the puzzle. Got it. Okay, great. Then, but the connectors will attach to each of the battery, the, the ports, right? Like uh, uh, those those little points sticking out will, as, as it shifts, it will touch each one of those connectors. Best way to find out is to turn it. You can yeah. turn it. Oh, uh, so Woodward's just going to spin it to the right without any batteries in it. Sure, sure. So really fast. Which direction? Uh, just so I know, you're right. Is it uh, this way? Clockwise. This way. Yeah, so uh, the bottom of it, mm -hmm. whatever would be uh, pointing, would then point towards the yellow side or clockwise. go west. Yes. Got it. Okay, boom. So you notice as you grab, as you all collectively grab the steering wheel and turn it 45 degrees in that direction, the wheel with a loud thunk loads into position. And as you look at it, sure enough, this big strut to the south, right? This one lines up perfectly here. And these two perfectly line up with this strut and, or I'm sorry, with this junction point and that junction point. Great. There is just enough room for something to be inserted in between those two junct the junction point and the strut. The junction point and the strut. So like a battery could go like the size of the battery, right? In theory, you could probably put a power cell or two there. So now do we just put the batteries in in order? I would. Let's just do it. What's the worst thing that can happen? She said you can only get shocked once. Well, well just <laughs> hypothetically. <like> death. <laughs> so purple, green, orange. Purple, green, orange. Is it just the order in which we put it in according to time? Or does it... Hmm. Because... I. What do you think? What should we do first? I feel like we should just start with yellow. 
Well, it's pointing at yellow now, right? Yeah. And then... Um, PJ, uh, the order of the bottom colors that was listed was purple, orange, and then green, right? They were written purple, green, orange. Oh, purple, green, orange, okay. Yes. And I will say, uh, because again, I cannot physically show you, that each of those little struts, the ones with the with the other twisting joints on it, does align with another junction point. So there's one here, one here, one here. They're all aligned up. Rufus is going to kind of just point out, like not physically point, but, well, not putting his finger onto the machine itself, but point at uh, the purple, green, orange. Uh, perhaps we should follow this order. Uh, yes, uh, purple, green, orange. So does that mean we should put a blue cell in on the east side first mm -hmm. and then mm, mm? perhaps wait okay if we put okay because if we start no. with the yellow that's not purple you You're know right. what i mean yeah no. and it's not like purple physically in a physical order that the other words are you know you're right so we should we should do <laughs> blue and red okay so now that we have <gasps> now that we have it <gasps> so what if we do blue first but it wasn't turned before and that might have been our issue so blue first and then we'll switch over to yellow maybe i thought i had it and then the last one could be red because then that matches the purple green orange i think so yeah well let's try to just put the blue in first it's the same place where he put it before but now it's turned like you said shionabis so either right. something bad will happen and we're wrong or something won't happen or something won't bad. happen and we'll then we'll know so i think we should try but not me because i am severely injured i mean i can do it i can take a hit i guess rufa ties one end of the rope around shonabis then okay so shonabis which power cell are you putting in first and where blue to the what did we say the to make purple to make purple yeah so whichever that location is i can't remember this is too stressful the red the red on the red the east red. side okay east. you take the blue power cell you take your hands you kind of you, you start to gently put in there your hands are shaking and you realize you need a bit more pressure and you just put your weight into it and your strength and and the power cell loads in there suddenly the two joint struts just and they just pull out onto it and hold it in place suddenly a powerful spark of electricity fires inside the wall and the circuit is complete as it goes through the red through the blue cell and into the center console sick okay I guess I want to take the what I say? Yellow? Mm -hmm. oh, the no, next red. one's green, right? So yeah, to make green, yeah. So. we have to, yeah. We have to take the yellow cell and put it in the blue section. Right. To make green. Right. Mm. Let's just do it. Okay. Pray to Anubis one more time. God take help me. Trigger again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so just some aware yellow power cell into the blue junction area, right? Yes. All right, same thing now. Once your hands stop shaking, you put your elbows into it. <laughs> the power cell locks in place. The two struts and joints just <laughs> more power starts surging through the wall. Sparks start to fly and then start to get funneled through into the center console. But but what do we have left? We have our red one. 
Yeah. Which will be put in between the yellow, the the last port, and to the yellow section, which would make orange. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. Show us the yeah. color yeah. wheel, Mona. Yeah. 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 The color wheel. Yeah. So we this, know. This is the color wheel. We're going to put. We're going to put the uh, the red, the red in the yellow section to make orange. Right there. I love the confidence that a color wheel can afford a young woman in her life. It helps you with making the best makeup choices for being on stage. And it helps you with life-threatening puzzles in goblin dungeons. So thank you for bringing that today. And thank you, Shionibus, for maybe putting yourself in harm's way. All right, you may proceed. There's only one thing I know about makeup, and I didn't think it involved a color wheel. I thought everyone's colors were determined by what season they were. I that's mean, a, that's a thing not too. wrong. Yeah, yeah. 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 Show us is going to push in the last battery. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> With full a- confidence this time, just kick, kick, tonk, and you hear the. <laughs> this, this energy flies to the power cell, slams to the center console. And with all of that, you start hearing this klaxon alarm starts going off. And suddenly red lights just spinning everywhere. Steam starts firing out of joints all over the room. You see the giant turnstile uh, wheel on this door, again like a bing fall, just starts spinning possessed by the power of goblin science. Just spinning, spinning, spinning until eventually here's and this massive 100 foot tall, probably 50 to 70 feet wide door just you're cracked, pulling steel against steel and screeching metal until it fully recesses into the wall and stops dead. The door to Mangle Ma's private lab has been opened. Just in time for Morel to fix his shield. Time for Bubble Boil to finish her boom booms. And just in time for us to take a five minute break. When we come back, the epic conclusion to Mangle Ma begins. We'll see you in five minutes, 927 Pacific Standard Time PM. We love you. We can't wait to see you. Bye. Hey, everyone. Thank you for letting us have that quick five. We solved the puzzle in record time. Without further ado, do the heroes enter the lair of Mangle Ball? 10 minutes. 10 whole yeah. resting minutes. I feel like, you know, I feel I've accomplished things here. Like we fixed the puzzle and we can just go, you know, like <laughs> it feels like we've gone far enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you have nothing else to prove. No, we could get him. Maybe we just scare him, you know, like open the door and be like, we could have got you. We we, will leave a note, (laughs) a very (laughs) ominous note. Yeah, there we go. Well, what I will say is that uh, I rolled a critical fail on any potential perceptions. So if you want to take a quick 10 unabated minutes to rest, go ahead and do that um, and prepare yourself for what's coming next. So you're saying that we open this gigantic loud AF mechanical door and yep. Mengel Ma is so fixated on what he's doing he didn't even notice. I mean we're just that good. Yeah. This builds suspense. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. It was all the the uh the, the eyeshadow talk he could hear through the door and he immediately tuned out. He what if asleep. we <laughs> what if we get in there and Mangle Ma had just choked on like a chicken bone like three <laughs> weeks ago? <laughs> Just no one checked on it. That was door. easy. It's like a Metal Gear Solid Three when you like you take a full week rest before fighting the end, and you come back and he dies of old age, right, and you're yeah. like, "Oh right, Metal Gear, like I'm so good." Well, while while we're doing take while we're taking a knee and taking our ten, mm-hmm. Rufa's gonna do a medicine check on Itchy. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. Let me know how that medicine check goes. Give me the full DC roll. That's going to determine how much you can heal, unless you want to heal a certain amount. But that will be dependent upon your training in heal checks. I'm sorry, medicine checks. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm only in train on that, but... Okay, give me a DC 15. I got a 19. Cool. You will heal uh, Ichi 2d8. Cool. That's really damn good. I, think I remember... Only... I remember when medicine checks were useless. Right I remember back, back in day. the day <laughs> when all you could tell was somebody was hurt. Yeah. And how bad? Like, yep, mm, yep looks... Looks rough, buddy. <laughs> Smack him on the back. He loses another two hit points. Considering I'm holding my lung, yes, I know. Yeah. I am in mortal danger. Thanks. It's it's a lot like that John Mulaney bit where it's like, sir, we found blood and evidence all over the room. Mm, gross. Now back to my hunch. Like, that's kind of what medicine checks were back in 3.5. Anyway, um, so yes, medicine check. You'll be healed 2d8. Um, does anyone else need a medicine check? Feeling good, feeling frisky. Yeah, who else is close to death? Anybody? I want to. I'm. I'm just gonna wait to see how well Ichi's holding up after this two d eight. Do I roll that or is? Oh, I do. I think. Okay. I think I do. And that you get ten HP back. Thank Double you. digits. All right. Uh, Ichi, kind of just like. Hmm. Okay. Uh, that's that's better. That's better. It's still. You know, I, yeah, yeah. I could... Rufo would draw a happy face on it. There you go. There you go. Happy face. It's all happy now. Happy, happy. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, uh, I know I'm not one to do this often because, well, I don't really know how you work, Ichi. I'm kind of familiar with, you know, healing badgers and deer and the other things that come across, but uh, I can give it a shot if you need it. I can't be that different from a badger. We have the same like favorite food groups. Uh, well, um, yeah. If you take that, that's you know what. How about everybody get real close? And uh, I'm gonna take my action to cast uh, heal. Um, at uh the uh three action. Three action is a 30 foot burst, right? Yes, sir. Great. You hear Alona just grumble. Well, everyone's a healer now. That's fine. I see how it is. I understand. Hey, look, I, I, I understand, but I, I, I usually try to hold it out for Mush, but uh, it seems to be going, you know, everything seems to go in his favor recently. So after hearing this, you just see Shionabis like pop her wine and go. And Alona, may I mention, we almost lost you to a toxic pit. We got to diversify. Uh, that, I believe it's 2d8, right? As well? In the spell? Uh, Sorry. It should be, uh, depending on the level. For example, yeah. if, if uh, Alona was to use her healing font, I believe that is automatically heightened. But if she uses her normal healing spells, that depends on what level she has that spell junctioned at. Great. So if you do it as a level one, it would be 1d8. 1d8. Okay. Um, that's fine. Uh, I will uh, then heal for 10 extra points to everybody within the 30 foot radius. Oh, good. Nice. 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 So nice. Are you all feeling good? Feeling ready? Okay. I want to. I want to spend the whatever as time for ten minutes to hopefully refocus. Mm. I, I have to do something that's pertaining to what the focus point is, and since it has, it's for wild shape. I'm going to play with mush. No, because it's animal related. Nice. Um, I'm going to see if there's anything I can do to actually get rid of Ichi's wounded condition. You're still wounded, which mm. is not good. Yeah. Yeah. She limps. And Just once. Before we actually even go in there, I'm gonna make sure Rufa has in his free hand what do you what do you call it a bag of cow traps ready. Okay, sounds like a plan. You can prepare that, no problem. Just getting your equipment ready. Uh, Shionibus, anything you want to do for your ten minutes refocus before you go off? Um, I'll have a uh, nice conversation, probably to herself in her head, but to Anubis. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. it. It's a great conversation. You actually get a good joke out of him. It's very, very fun. Uh, he says, He's been uh, hanging out with Ra too much. 
Yeah, he's he's starting to get that like jovial sense of humor. He, he says, at least he goes, what do you get it? What do you call when the water of Nubia does not believe it is the water of Nubia? Denial. It's a that good was so joke. Bad. That was so I, bad. Oh, I'm very God. proud of that one. Um, meanwhile, you have Morel who is watching uh, Woodward and Mush play uh, as he does a quick refocus in prayer. He kind of bends the knee. To, well, no, I'm sorry. Tobias bends the knee. He gets on both knees, prays towards the rising sun, uh, and you can hear under his breath, he's just kind of laughing. He's, he's laughing to himself as he hears your jovial play. Now, oh, Tobias has been with us this entire time. I thought Tobias was watching Joey with Hair and Antigone. Yeah. yeah, that's why I'm confused. I said Morel. I have, oh, yeah, okay. Morel's doing the prayer facing the, okay. east of the, uh, the rising sun. Okay. And really quick, I just want to point out, so Anubis got a new domain. He's the god of dad jokes. Oh, nice. Yep. Uh, I'm ready to go. Let's All do right. it. Fight this guy. Thing. Okay. Goblin? Joe, play Battle Brain. Bring a mech suit or something like that. Huh? Joe, play Battle Brain, please. The lights of green, a sickly green, pulsing blue energy courses through massive tubes. Tubes equally as big as this room, 100 feet tall. You see these gigantic round metal devices, square consoles. You see levers. Steam popping out, akimbo. This thing is a living, breathing room. And there in the center, you see, hulked over himself, the green frame of a goblin. His top head sliced open and thumping and thumping out of his skull is a ruby red brain. You see goggles embedded into the flesh, scab tissue just growing and climbing over the rims as lights move back and forth across his goggles. You see him with one arm behind his back and one arm clutching a lever as he speaks to himself. I say, old boy, we've done it again. No, no, we have no, 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 no. We have this. We've taken over everything. We've made the fixes. We haven't fixed anything. Oh, dear boy, you must be patient with yourself. And as he begins to speak, you see him take this big green vial of liquid and start pouring it all over his thumping and exposed brain. And when he puts the thing back, he scratches. You see electricity sparking out of his skull as he then starts kind of picking his teeth and playing with his beard, his scraggly white beard. And he starts to whistle a tune. And he points and taps a sign and says, whistle while you work. Whistling makes the work fun. And there he is, pulling the levers. His punched back, his white coat, his beady eyes, flashing lights. And as he says, yes, we have perfected everything down to the smallest building. We can have perfected everything in all of God's green, terrible earth. And Perupos will be quite proud of us, dear boy. Yes, he'll be so proud. Yes, he will. But first, we must address into our lab. And he turns to look at you. Hello, double tolls. Hello, you wonderful people. Welcome to our laboratory. <laughs> Apologies for the brain. The hard part was getting it out, but the easy part. <laughs> Suddenly, he flips a switch. Lights flare across the room as steam pours out from all corners, and you can hear another klaxon start to rise. My name is Carl Engelmach. It's a pleasure to absolutely meet you. Oh, my God. You are now standing in front of Ka Mengelma. Tubes 
like cities stand around him. Machines whirring and spewing chemicals and raw power. And he stands there, adjusting the goggles that you are almost now positive are his eyes. Scabby flesh kind of cracks and bleed as he looks to you. So, you come by me some... Ah, lovely, perfect weapon. I really hope it's to the general's great great design. Please, inspect away. It's cute. And then he starts whistling a tune as he steps back into the darkness. The shadows that just barely hang like a gossamer web in between this massive, pumping, thriving room. And you can see a horrible bubble boil. Her eyes begin to rage and seethe with red beacons of light, and she is just biting her tongue. What do you do? So, out of character. Mm hmm. He, he did not see through our disguises because you rolled a nat one. Is that correct? Say it again. He did not see through our disguises. He did not. He thinks. Great. He thinks Gev Zebel and Morel are the same person. He thinks. Uh, what's her name is somewhere in there? Uh, Madazong. Madazong. He thinks you're Madazong and he thinks they're all pirates here for the inspection. Um, also, when you said that the lights flood the room, does that mean there's no places to hide, right? It's a big open room. Maybe you can pick a corner. But he's looking right at you, hiding within okay. the very thin shadows of the room. Well, we better get to inspecting, methinks. Mm -hmm. What's this big tube over here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Shionibus, or Matt, as long as it's just going to be like a, like, look over her shoulder at everyone and just like, circle as her hand is on her scimitar that's now on her hip mm -hmm. that's what pirates do and walk forward towards him all right he looks to you and he goes yes i say welcome great pirate armada queen it's a pleasure to have you here on our boat now you're here to inspect the greatest creation that we've so done. Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Geb? Uh, she looks uh. over at Morel and hopes he can think of something. Uh, he kind of, he kind of gets the hit and goes, <clears throat> Yes, you pitiful little thing. We are here to find the new weapon for Korokos. Why are you not revealing him to us now? M Morel kind of like turns to look disinterested and looks at you guys going, I have no idea what he sounded like. Why does he sound like Christopher Walken though? Because <laughs> <laughs> Morel is like, I have no he... idea what he sounded like. I just picked something. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Which means somewhere in canon, Morel's heard someone talk like that. <laughs> you just pick something. Uh, Hold on, now I have to make a note that somewhere in Acadia, Christopher Walken is living there. <laughs> That's the next door neighbor. Thing. Yeah. All right. So. Um, do you go with, uh, Morel's bit where he's like, we want to see the weapon? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and she just adds, and we're very short on time, so if you could do it quickly, that would be greatly appreciated. Sure, and sure. as she's, like, scanning the whole room to any source that could help get rid of this guy. Okay. Joe, cut the music really fast. Joe, please play Chimera Warrior or Chimera Soldier. Good. 
<laughs> Good. Let me introduce to you the greatest weapon I've ever made. The other one's too big. Too big. Too big. Too bloody tall. So what if I took 1,000 orcs, he pulls a lever, change the programming so that elves can't mess with their minds and make them the size of a normal orc? Suddenly this alarm starts going off again. This two... Slides up. Steam envelops the whole room as the smoke plumes out of the tube, and then you hear the <laughs> two feet enter the room. Yes, I never got to feel this. I was too busy protecting the brain, the brain, the minds, ladies and gentlemen, members of the Green Army. Destruction of the whole world is surely assured. He walks amongst the wolves as the Alpha Wolf. Introduce yourself, my perfect creature. And as the smoke begins to fade, you see an orc standing before you. Lu units. Lijon Liantari. Cracks his neck. Makes a fighting stance. Target acquired. Designation Shionabis. Woodward. Rufach. Ichi Papekui. In the Olona. In the name of Korokos, I will destroy you. And that is where we're going to roll initiative as Leontari has targeted you all for destruction. Small note, he still thinks Mushbeard is a pirate because he didn't mention him as a target, which is also beautiful. <laughs> 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 See, yeah, we <laughs> Leon Leotar is like, Mushbeard, you are a great beard. I will not fight you. It's just like, I know I shouldn't have used the facial recognition app. It's, you never know where they're going to sell that information to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Before we go into combat, um, it would it be possible for me, for Rufa, to do a recall knowledge craft on to compile a mental list of all the nearby chemicals that he would maybe re uh, recognize? I'm going to say no. Okay. It's pretty, it, it's not... Flammable. Yeah, I mean, if you want to just boom, 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 there's a lot of boom, booms here. Uh, speaking of which, you notice Cahobra Bubble Boil is not in the room anymore. She's literally the worst, guys. I hate her so much. <laughs> All right, that so... Sucks. <laughs> On the level one to Tobias. Oh, ouch. What a painful metric to hear. But whatever, you know, hey, you're not wrong. Tobias is more helpful. Um, yeah, but he smells like badger pee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I got a nat 20. Hey, yo. Uh, perception, right? Alona's just mad she was last in the list. <laughs> no, she's mad that everyone else is jumping on the healing. <laughs> she's like, I want to punch some people. She's just mad the 1,000 uh, 1, orc souls are now trapped in one horm horm horrible form and they recaptured Leontari, who was helping us earlier, so I don't know how that happened. Wait, if uh, he's the size of a normal orc, does that mean he shrunk? From the sound of the footsteps, it doesn't sound like he's any smaller. So he's no. not the size of a normal orc. He's a big boy still. Still a big boy. Uh, I will let you know when combat starts. Shionabis, what is your initiative? 25. 25. Heckin' sweet. Uh, <laughs> Sam, what is your initiative? 17. 17. Uh, Michael, what is your initiative? 23. Okay. And Ian, what is yours? Uh, 24. 24. 24. Morel is there. Would you like Morel to enter the battle with you? Yes, yeah, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please. <laughs> so, Sydney, what's your uh, wisdom modifier bonus? Because he also got a critical 20. Oh, dang! Uh, four. Okay. Let me check his character sheet. I'm pretty sure you're more wise than he is. Um, Four? Yeah, you, you are. Okay. 
Great. So, as Leontari squares up, you look and see he is exactly the size of a regular orc. But his footsteps make the whole room shake. And his fingers just kind of like crack as he makes a fist. And he kind of ducks his head low. Kind of preps his one front foot. Manglemaw is just smiling ear to ear. You can see his teeth like daggers. His eyes literally start to glow with this creepy iridescent light. Alona, you go first. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I'm actually, um... I'm actually gonna go for Mengelma. Okay. First. I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon on him. Okay. So you see the, the fist, the, 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 holy, the holy fist of Afra with the passion flower on it. Just about to go pound him down on this guy. Um, I forget if I have to roll to hit him. I probably do. Um, what do I add for spiritual? I guess it's with my spell attack roll. That's correct. Um, does a dirty 20 hit him? Mangle Maw? Yeah. Mangle Maw's AC. Versus a dirty 20. You'll just miss. Damn. Okay. That was two actions. I will use my other action to... Um... Who's next? Next up is Morel after you. Um, I'm going to cast Guidance on Morel. Okay. Great. Morel is going to go. He books it to the front of the line... Uh, he is going to raise his shield, and he is going to make an intimidation check against Leontari. He's, and he looks at me and says, Monster, when I first met you, I let you kill me. Today will not be a second day of that. Square up, green beast! His intimidation check, unfortunately, it falls on deaf ears as Leontari just says, Unit Morel. Inconsequential. Oh. But Morel has established a front line. He also rolled a four die face without intimidation check. Didn't go very well. Um, Shonabas. Your boy has called your name out. And he looks he looks ready to rumble. What are you going to do? Cool. Uh, first off, Marcus Prey. Mm -hmm. So I can get that precision bonus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and I am going to take as far back as I can get with my movement, my full movement. Okay. And fire. Yeah, I guess I can only I can only technically fire one arrow. Two would be two actions, right? Uh, with the double shot, I believe so. Yeah. So I'm gonna just fire one. Oh, dice don't fail me now. Ooh, hero point. That's a nat one. Ooh, yeah, hero point that <sighs> if you got it. Uh, that's gonna be a 24 to hit. Okay, on Leontari, that will hit. Okay. Ooh, that's max damage for one of them. Math. Not as great. That's 15 points of damage. Okay. Piercing, if that makes a difference. But... Uh, let me check. All right. You've done your damage. And, oh, mm -hmm. no, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Um, and that's it. Okay. You shoot the arrow. <laughs> Flies. It hits his musculature. It kind of and stops. It doesn't enter, but it stops on his body, and you see the arrow drop from his form as he's just slowly mentally, like, you can see his, his eyes are stalking you. Um, next up. Ian. Great. Um, 
I think uh, seeing the strike, well, the strike from the spiritual weapon, spiritual weapon sticks around for a while, right? It should, yes. Great. Um, seeing that opening to uh, basically try to take a crack at um, Mangle Maw, why he may be dealing with that weapon, whether it hits him or not. Um, I am going to, or Woodward will cast uh, Ray of Frost and try okay. to hit him. It's got a range of 120 feet. I'm not entirely sure how far we are from Mangle Maw, so the rest yeah. of my spells are 30 feet, and I don't know if that would make it. That's right. Um, ooh, that is close. Um, 21. I said 20 didn't hit last time. <laughs> Almost, like, barely missed, and so I don't know if 21 is. You're attacking Mangle Maw, correct? Yes. 21 will barely hit, yes. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, let's go... Uh, that's nine points of damage. Okay. Nine points of damage. He does not look happy. I hope he doesn't. <laughs> uh, Alright, do you have any other actions for your turn? Um, I'm actually going to cast Guidance on Mush. In All case, right. you know, there's like an AoE or something. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Next up... Michael. All right. Um, how close are we to... What's the positions of uh, Mangle Maw and uh, Leontari? Leontari is definitely taking the lead. Mangle Maw is about five feet behind him. Mm, okay. Well, first, I am going to use my free action because this is all pertains to the Green War, which is my open case to do known weakness, which is um, basically, what is it? Uh, roll a recall knowledge as part of that action. If you critically succeed on the recall knowledge check, I notice a weakness and gain a plus one. Okay. Um, and that's, that's a check you make or that I have to roll for you? Um, I believe I make the recall knowledge, but you form the DC of it. Okay, go right ahead and roll. I think uh, we call knowledge. Would, uh, wait, what skill would it be though? Perception. Perception. Okay. Yeah. Twenty-five. Okay. And uh, it. Oh. Who are you looking at specifically again? Uh, Leontari. Cool. And. You, yep. If I do get that plus one, I'm going to shout out whatever I learned to the entire group. So everybody else gets a plus one on their next attack roll. All right. Um, it's difficult to say with Leontari. You definitely start to calculate a plan, and the only plan you can think of is burn him down with overwhelming might. Swarm him! The best tactic for now is swarming him! And, um gonna now take my actual action um to devise a strategy uh, to um actually towards uh mangle maw am i in range to throw cow traps at uh mangle maw uh you're about 30 feet away i believe most okay. thrown weapons end about 20 so the, the, it would basically just kind of be in front of you and not near him okay um well i'm gonna move take one action to move from the side around the entire Towards Mangle Maw. Okay, uh, so you are sense. you are thirty feet away. You're kind of moving it. You have a movement of twenty five feet with the mm -hmm. uh, with one action left. Yeah. Uh, no, okay. no uh, two actions left. Okay. So yeah, you can definitely get behind um, Leontari and get to Mangle Maw. Mm -hmm. And from there, I'm going to use my second actual action to throw the cow chops at Mangle Maw. Basically, goes pocket cow chops. Sha -sha! All right, really fast. What's your AC? 20. 20. As you run around Lee and Tari, he looks at you, critically punches you in the face. Oh. You take. I'm sorry about this, because this is the big boy. 
Oh, that's not too bad. No, it's bad. Okay. You take 31 damage as he punches you in the side of your head. And as his fist continues to slide at your face, you can see it start to turn into a blade. And he just, just cuts you at the temple. Blood everywhere. Are you still alive? I'm at five. All right. So as he cuts you in the head as you're running to Mangle Mall, he looks at you and, fo- and just watches you run around the back to Mangle Mall. He then turns and says, Ilona dies first. And then just starts posting up. That was his attack of opportunity. You can still put those caltrops down. You're at 5 HP, my dude. Well, yeah, I'm going to definitely put that caltrops down, and I believe I still have one action because that known weakness is a free action. Okay, one more action. What are you going to do? Um, I am going to attempt to trip Mangle Maw. Okay, make an athletics check. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Sure enough, you wrap around his tiny stubby legs and and with a pull, he just ass over tea kettles flat on his back. You can see his brain move like flan or jello on a plate. I have to ruin flan for me. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Is I'm a wordsmith? I don't know. Okay. Jello's fine. You can run jello through the ground, but Jell-O's flan, fine. come on. Okay. There's okay. a line. Flan is good. Okay, so jello. Yeah, dude. Like a the cello. Okay, so next up. It's Mangle Ma's turn. Uh. As he's on his back, you hear him just <laughs> I say, dear boy. He pulls out a bottle, pops the top, starts just pouring it all over his open brain. And as he does this, you start seeing his body start to shake in a matter of split seconds. His eyes, his goggle eyes turn into cat eyes, start shooting out bright light. His body starts to get live. And as he's on the ground, he reaches into his pocket, pulls out another glowing concoction and just hucks it. Hucks it at Rufa. Because you're right there. He is going to roll to hit you. With a plus three on this. What's your AC? Uh, 20 right now. He takes this vial in his hands. You can see it start to shake as the green liquid starts to churn into a vermilion red. And you just, he throws it blindly over his shoulder at you. It starts whiffing in the air, passes right by you. And with a total of seven, he misses you by 15 feet. It hits the ground, shatters, and explodes in the most violent, vitriolic, and vehement conflagration you've ever seen. It's almost like the fire literally has anger in its heart and it splashes and it's nowhere close to you he whiffed it hard um rufus expression right now is shock pikachu yeah and <laughs> thank god too because that alchemist fire that he threw at you was looking pretty spicy now it's leontari's go leontari he's looking at all of you in a split second, he's gone. Suddenly, he reappears in midair in front of Alona with a flying knee and just throws this big knee to her face. What's your AC, Alona? 14. <laughs> okay. You suddenly hear 
the most enraged scream of your life. As Morel turns and says, You will do no such thing, monster! Stand down now! And a big golden shield of light in a purple flower with Morel inside the shield, literally screaming at him, starts to appear. And Leontari shakes his head and says, They must all die. And throws his knee through the shield of light. Morel has used his Redeemer's reaction. He will be buffering some of this critical damage coming to your face. Do I... I have also shield as a reaction. Does that help? Stack yes, it does. Yes, it does, Stack actually. Em. Good. Because that's, that's five less critical damage that I would take. Yes. Oop, that's the wrong day. Okay. So it's five less, right? Mm-hmm. Get rid of that D20 or D12, sorry. Okay. As his knee starts moving through what looks like this this passion flower and golden light shield made of morel, literally screaming at him, don't you dare. His knee kind of hits, breaks through morel. Your shield comes up. His knee <laughs> slams into that, keeps pushing with all his might, breaks through, lands solid into your jaw. You take 25 damage as he slams his knee into your head. Everyone can hear the audible click of your jaw unsetting and resetting back into place with the impact of his knee. And as he lands, with one action left, He sweeps low and goes to grapple Alona in a bear hug. What's your fortitude DC? Uh, where would I, f is that just, what's my saving throw? Oh uh, yeah, your bonus to your saving throw plus 10. Uh, well that's 18. 18, okay, so he's, He's gonna get you. So after he cracks you on the jaw, he's, he basically uh, scoops low, picks you up by your knee and behind your head, and just hugs you close. And as he's got you basically right into his torso, he looks around the room, like, looting it. And he's just basically holding you hostage as he's threatening the room. Okay, how much would the damage have been if Morel hadn't tried to save me and I didn't have that dinky five shield? 35. Okay. Now, next up, Sam. So, Scott Alona is very important. Is he in melee range of me right now? You're kind of in the middle, I assume. Morel's created the front line. I imagine Alona's probably somewhere towards the back. Am I right? Or where would you be, Alona, in, in the theater of the minds? Um, I would definitely be in the back because my my spell had a 120 foot range. So I guarantee it would be the back yeah. of the party. Then you're easily 10 feet away from Alona. Got it. Um, does it appear to me as if I if I make an attack on him, I'm in danger of hitting Alona? If you crit fail, you will hit Alona. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. I am... Ichi is going to... With sudden charge, rush towards him and take a precision swing at him with the Retribution Axe. All right. Okay, not bad. Let's see what that gives us. That's a 23 to hit. The hits. Sweet. Leontari? Yes. Let me confirm that really fast. That will hit. Okay, okay. Don't forget, everybody gets plus one until my turn. Oh, so yeah, it's a 24 then. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 
damage for retribution axe is going to be eight on the die phase plus strength plus my he's an orc right yep. yes he is all right or is he is the question he's actually 1000 orcs compressed into the size of a normal orc he's a he's, lot of orc <laughs> he's more orc than orc uh, so two for the retribution axe on that and one for my vengeful hatred towards lots of orcs so that's 15 points of damage all right 15 points of damage 15 yeah okay as you come in with this axe you can see you get a nice clean shot at his thigh and you're gonna see the blade hit it and kind of slide off you can see a nasty bruising start to swell on his leg but he doesn't even seem to flinch this is not good <laughs> and morel i'm sorry morel um Leontari looks at his leg and looks at you and he says, You will be third. Ichi's at this point, she has one action left. Mm -hmm. She is going to drop the retribution axe and she's going to attempt to grapple him right back and get him to drop Alona. And remember that Ichi is a Titan wrestler, and while he may not be two sizes larger than her, he appears to have the heft of a creature two sizes larger than her. Mm -hmm. So she could take him. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and try to make a fortitude or an athletic checks against his fortitude DC. Okay. That is going to be. A athletics 25 okay 25 versus leontari's fortitude dc 25 correct yeah alona's frame and his strong muscles makes it very hard to get a clean grapple on him you try to hook the knee maybe even like scoop an arm in get your hooks in under his under his elbow or armpit He's too well defended. You can't get a grip on him. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. Top of the next round. Elona. If you wish to try to athletics your way out, you can. If you want to try and acrobatics your way out, you can. If you want to try doing a spell cast, you may try to do that as well. Within limitations. Okay. Um, I would like to try and cast command on him to drop me. Um, okay. That is... That's one action. And that's a will save for him against my uh, spell DC, which is 18. Okay. I need to confirm something really fast. Yeah, and and my command on him lasts until uh, his next turn. So if I tell him to drop me, he cannot pick me back up until. Okay. End of his so, the DC is an eighteen to beat. Yeah. He fails his check. Sweet. Okay, this means that, um, great. He asked it's great, awesome. This is awesome. Cool, so he he uses all of his actions to, to drop me. Um, so that was one action, he has dropped me. I am in pain. Uh, and so is Rufa. So I'm going to use my last action to um, to let's see, let's see. Where's Rufa? Rufa, where are you? Rufa is approximately 50 feet diagonally away from you. Yeah. He spent two move actions to go around the whole fight. Smart. He he definitely got a sneak attack off. Uh, but this would make you out of touch range. 
-hmm. I cannot heal you until you get closer to me. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to heal myself <laughs> because I am also almost dead. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to use, um, one of my second level heals and that's going to be, uh, 2d10 plus 8 because I need it. So... I'm healed for 19 damage. I'm 19 health. Excellent. And that was the last two of my actions. So my turn is over. Okay. All right. It's now Morel's turn. Lay into him. Don't forget his plus one. Morel gets a plus one too. Thank you, thank you. Ooh, he can heal too. He can. So. Okay. All right. So first thing Morel does is he storms away from the front line. He comes running up, and with this giant hand, he just says, Monster, you are forgiven, and makes this giant Superman punch and slams a fist into Leontari's face. He critically hits. Plus his strength modifier. Okay. He'll do 15 damage to Leontari, who seems to almost no-sell it. He hits him, and, Leon and Leontari kind of whips his head, looks at him. With that, he shoots a leg, spins around his back, gets him with a, with two hands around his waist, and then just suplexes Leontari behind him. Oh, oh, Morel. Great. Yes. Good. She's like, I taught him that. <laughs> <laughs> And as he slams him prone, you see him arch his back, flip over, and pin, and he's, with all of his might, he's trying to pin Leontari down, and it's not going well. Like, Leontari is constantly just, like, just like basically breaking against his grasp, going down a bit, and then coming right back up. And, and Morel is just going, I don't know how much longer I can keep this bloody monster on the ground. That's his turn. Next up. Yonibus, you have Mangalma on his back, and ironically, you have Leontari also on his back. Um, shoot. Sorry, you have Leontari marked as prey. Okay, we're gonna do one shot at Leontari. Still marked as prey, still using precision. <sighs> and just. Pray for the best. Oh, that was so close to being so good. That's going to be a 26 to hit. To hit Leontari on the ground? Yes. Okay. There will be penalties because you are shooting a downed opponent, but don't worry. With a 26 minus the penalties I could give you, it's still a clean hit. Sick. I love when I get max damage. Uh, that's going to be 12 damage. 12 damage, Leontari. Okay. Uh, shooting another arrow at Mango Ma. Can I? Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong, and this sounds kind of gross. Is mm -hmm. his brain visible? It is exposed to air. Dick. We going to aim at... the right half of his frontal lobe. Okay, now, you're doing a called shot to a specific part of the anatomy at a downed opponent with a multiple attack penalty. I'm Does my multiple attack work even though I have one of my rings? Yes, it will. The ring is lets okay. you roll twice. So, oh. what I will let you do is, if you want to do this, you'll be taking a minus eight penalty. But since you have your ring of Shulg, you can technically roll twice as if you're under the effect of true strike. Sick. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. All right. 
Gonna do it. All right. It's gonna be like a 17, even with the penalty for the first okay. one. Solid. Go oh, so close. It's gonna be a dirty 20. Subtract eight. That's like a what? 12. Yeah. So, so 17 was the first one. 17 was the first one. Okay. Okay. The arrow plinks off the ground and fires back up into the air and then lands deftly. You are so close. Wait, wait, no, he's flat-footed. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta do math, he's flat-footed. 17 was the hit? Yes. Still misses. Damn. So close. Close, you were close. Uh, last action, I'm going to... I'm gonna hide behind one of the pillars. Okay. I'll tell you what. Uh, give me one stealth check to kind of do the running and the hiding. That's an 11. 11. No, okay. No. Sadly, they will see you run behind the pillar. I just need cover. That's it. All right. Next up, Ian. trying to figure out where Woodwort would be in the middle of all this. He cast a spell from pretty far back. He wouldn't be in front of Morel since he set the first line. So I'm guessing he's probably somewhere in the middle with Ichi. Um, not quite as far back as uh, Alona was. So if Ichi and Alona were 50 feet apart, correct? No, 30, 30 feet apart? Ichi and Alona? Yes. 15 feet apart. 15 feet apart. And then from Alona to Rufa was 50 feet. Yes, sir. So I would be 35 feet away from him. Yes. Great. Um, damn, I'm a tiny gnome. My movement speed isn't that great. Um, I'm going to take... Uh, I'm going to take my two actions to run over to Rufa to get to him. Mm -hmm. uh, that should be 50 feet. Um, so I can at least get there. And I have one action left. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to spend uh, another one on my heal spell. Try to get some something into Rufa at, the, at this point. Okay. So it's going to be a level one spell, which is one d eight plus my uh, modifiers. So that gets to eight points yield. Okay. And that will end my turn. Um, I didn't. I have to have an action left to command Mush. So I was reading up on it, and not commanding Mush means he basically stayed out of harm's way. They don't put their way, they don't put themselves into harm's way in any way. So he's kind of trying to stay away from the, the big mean greens. Okay, so Mush is basically a non threat at this point in time, and as such, um, he won't be targeted by the two individuals. Uh, okay. Michael, mm -hmm. your turn, yep. my dude. What do you do? All right. Well, first, I'm going to devise a stratagem on mm -hmm. Mangle Mall. Mm -hmm. So I just, I, it's basically I pre roll my attack roll and it's good or not, you know, that thing. Yeah. 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 Okay, and um, part of that, ooh, that is actually a really good roll. Um, real quick, uh, part of that is also, once again, feeds into the known weakness thing, mm -hmm. which is a free action. Mm -hmm. So perception on that, ooh, nat 20. Awesome, hell yeah. So yeah, nat you, 20. I mean, the guy is just prone with weaknesses. He's, he's laying on the ground on his back. He's got an exposed brain. And even though his body seems to be responding to chemicals, he's shoving into his form. Doesn't seem very hardy. Um, one of the things I really want to see, though, is 
those potions he has on him are, are, are any of them flammable still like flammable potions you have no idea you have to make a okay. crafting check to understand but what i can say is that does still give you a bonus because it's your, your thing so it's a plus uh plus two and uh what's what's the total to hit um i got a 28 on that but really quick um i'm gonna relay all this information real quick to the allies so everybody gets a plus one until my next turn on uh, mangle maw Right, plus one to Mangle Maw until the start of Rufus' next turn. Mm -hmm. That being said, <laughs> you were one point away from a dirty crit. You will hit deal damage to Mangle Maw. Wait. Yes. What? Yes, one one point away from a dirty crit. It is still a normal hit. Roll damage. Okay. Where is my... this? And I believe that's also what is it? What I, what I called it? Um, budge. Strategic strike, yeah. So it's a one d six plus a what? Plus a one d six plus a one d four, right? Mm -hmm. Plus your strength modifier. Nine. Nine damage. All right. You hit him very hard. He seems to scuttle like a cockroach on its back. Just. And he just makes this horrific scream that just kind of melds into, I say, it was most uncouth. Um, and I would like to use my second action to just like regular dirty hit him again. I know I get a minus four on that, right? Yes, sir. Nineteen. That'll just hit roll damage. I also forgot, I, I could add my uh, intelligence to my bonus actually instead because it's a strategic strike. Hell yeah, give me that damage, my dude. Six. Okay, not bad. Mm -hmm. And my last action, I'm going to GTFO uh, as close as I can to uh, Woodward as possible without getting uh, attack of opportunity from the Antari. Right. Thank you, the Antari just ran right into the thick of it and went right for the healer. So he's he's got some distance. With your one action, you'll go 25 feet closer mm -hmm. to Woodward. You're yeah. safe. Uh, that being said, with Michael's turn done, that means it's Manglemaw's turn. Manglemaw gets up, pulls out two things. In one hand, you see this green tube that starts to glow green and white like a silver. He takes it, slams it against his chest. You start seeing the green liquid, the green silver liquid start to drip down his body and start to almost like fade into his skin as he kind of... <laughs> and he gets the other one and shakes it up. Throws it into your general collective area. It smashes against the ground in this horrible, vile, green and yellow, sickly mist starts to stretch around it. I'm going to need Rufa, Woodwort, and Shonibus, I'm going to need you to give me a basic fortitude save. Even though I'm not even, like, near them? You're... Yeah, yeah, the pillar would probably way off the side. So just be the two of you. I got a 26. Nice. I got a 16. And I got a quick question. Um For sure. Did Mangle Maw move at all from where he's at? No, sir. Okay. Uh, so, uh, okay. So, Woodward Rufa, you take eight acid damage Ooh. as this horrible vile liquid starts getting into your body. You are now under the effects of Orc Toe. Um,. Woodward isn't because he made the save, but Michael, uh, Rufa has now lost 10 to his speed. 
Hmm. Every round, you're going to have to make another fortitude save. The more uh, those fortitude saves don't succeed, the worse Orc Toe gets. Right now, you're at a minus 10 to your speed, as you can feel your legs start to get kind of heavy and shaky. It's like the gout. <laughs> Absolutely is. Um, and with that, when he slams the vial into his chest... Wow. Okay, wow. that is funny. Okay. He takes his potion, slams it into his chest. He takes the healing potion that he has called the Get Better Recovery Potion, heals himself for 3 HP. Nailed the it. smallest amount of HP he could heal himself with. I just think that's funny. Okay. Anyway, Mangle Ma's turn is done. Now Leontari's turn. Leontari. As he's being held down, looks at Morel and opens his mouth. Morel looks confused. Suddenly, this 30 foot cone goes vertical through Morel's face. It comes firing out like a geyser. This horrible, burning, sickly green liquid just <clears throat> bursts out of him. Morel cannot get out of the way in time. Morel takes 26 damage to the face and he screams in a miserable pain as he pulls his head back finally from the breath and you can just see welts and cuts and blood just dripping from his face with that taking advantage of the chaos he is going to make Leontari is going to make an athletics check to break free of Morel's grapple hold on Okay. And as Morel rings back in terror, Leontari grabs him by the jaw, throws him off his form, and slowly starts to get up. He is still considered prone and flat-footed. His two actions were to breathe the poison breath, and his other one was to get Morel off of him. He is slowly getting back up. That is the end of Leontari's turn. That being said, it is now Sam's turn. Sam. Leontari is still on the ground. His poison breath has severely hurt Morel. Mangle Maws across a pitch of Caltrops, but has done a very bad job trying to heal himself. He gave a target rich environment. What do you do? She's going for Leontari, and she's just going to see what he did to Morel and get angry. And all of a sudden, the spirit energy. Oh, do we just lose? We're back. Oh, we're back. We good? Yeah. Cool. So the spirit energy starts to just like fill her eyes and the glow surrounds her and she's going to rage. All right. Uh, yeah. So she's raging and now she's going to go hit him with that axe. All right. Roll to hit, downed opponent, flat footed. Don't miss. What do I get flat-footed again? Uh, their AC will be at a penalty. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Let's see if we're gonna hit him. That is, I'd say 22 to hit. Okay, with a plus one from Rufa. That's not a oh, dirty yeah. crit, but that is a hit. Roll damage with all your might against this orc. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. All right. Let's get all these damage bonuses going. We've got base die and strength, and then we're raging, which is plus three, and then we're using orc damage, which is plus two, and then I hate orc, so that's a plus four. <laughs> and I think that's all my bonuses. Yes. All right. That's a 17. 17. Okay. As you come running up and just slam your axe into him, you finally see Leontari start to respond to trauma. It hits him, and he actually starts to kind of bend a little bit and recoil. He looks at you, rage in his eyes, and you start to see a little bit of green monster blood 
pour out of Leontari's body. You have bloodied Leontari. I will just yell before my turn is over. Keep hitting him, guys. We got to take him down. All right. That ends the second round of combat. Third one starts. Sydney, top of the round. What are you going to do? Okay. Well, since Leontari is bloodied, um, I'm actually going to leave him to the rest of everybody else, and I'm going to try and heal Morel. Um, so I'm going to use, let's see, how how close is he? Uh, he's basically five feet away from Leontari, so as long as you're within, like, ten feet, you can get to him in fifteen. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to heal him. That's another heightened at two. I have a lot of heightened heals when we leveled up, so I'm really happy about that. So um, that's going to be two d10 plus eight again. Ah, okay. That sucks. <laughs> um, I only heal him 11 HP. Okay, that's not bad. He looks much better. Uh, so you, you have to touch him, right? So as you put your hand on his face, mm -hmm. you can see the blood instantly stop and the skin get better. Um, and for a brief second, his hand kind of touches yours and he looks into you with his golden purple eyes and he says, You keep saving my life. Thank you. It's because you keep saving mine. So, um, you said it took me one action to get over to him and then two to cast heal. Yes, ma'am. So that is the end of my turn. Okay. It's now his turn. Great Fury, he walks over to Leontari. As Leontari is slowly getting back up. He takes his shield. And he jumps in the air and just comes down with the shield very hard onto Leontari's head. And he says, I forgive you, you damn monster. And he does it again. And as he misses a second time, he puts his boot on Leontari's shoulder successfully keeps him pinned with his foot and he says now grant us mercy or I strip it from you um with that being said he's done some damage unfortunately he missed the second attack and he's trying to keep him pinned um it is now Shionibus' turn um let's just how far away is he, Leontari, from me behind the pillar? Uh, transversely, 20 feet. This is down opponent. Gotta get rid of this guy. All right, let's just lock and load. Is he still prone? Yes, he's, he's being forced prone by Morel because no one told him to stand him back up. I immediately thought of another John Mulaney quote, but it's fine. Um, so let's stay down on the ground. Stay down on the ground. It's my money. It's my freaking money. <laughs> Focus, Kylie. I we're just gonna for all three. PJ, do you know how much? that penalty will be for that last one. So all that three shots? Mm-hmm. Yeah, be a 10. Let's just do it. We're gonna do all three. Okay. Ooh. Wait. Wait. No, you said he was 20 feet? Yes. 
that won't work. Never mind then. All right, original plan. Here we go. Okay. I was so close to being so good. 25 to hit. Almost a dirty crit. So close. Close. Wait, wait. No. You get a plus one from Michael until the end of the start of his next turn. That makes that a 26. That makes that a dirty crit. First shot out the gate's a dirty crit. There it is. Love that. Love that. Okay. That's 14 plus. Not as good. Twenty-five damage. Okay. Second attack. Definitely not gonna hit. Mm -hmm. Third attack. This is just a straight roll because that's plus ten is my add to hit. That was gonna be so good. That's a sixteen to hit. Sixteen total. Yeah. That hits. That hits. Sick. Use the 26 dice. was a dirty crit. That's true. You're right. Math. Nine damage. Okay. So and like that's a, it. Total is 33 okay. or 34. That's pretty damn yeah. good. So you... Wang. Wang. You see arrows start to, like, stitch from his ribs to his shoulder. The first one goes deep in. A bunch of green and yellow and white blood starts pouring on the floor. It goes up. It hits a solid part of his muscle, kind of bounce off. That last one sticks him hard in the pack. More just starts pouring out. He is just a perforated uh, Capri Sun spilling that juice every... I'm going to ruin your childhood. That's my whole goal. Uh, I forgot to add other damage. Gosh, as long as Flan is off the table. I forgot what? to add other damage. What damage did you forget to add? Uh, my precision damage. So another D8. I think, I think oh. we can just let that roll. Go ahead and roll that. It's okay. Add seven. Okay, 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 okay. This dice has been treating me good tonight. Gotta remember. Sydney, remind me. The Which red one. Is one. It? The red the one. The red one. The red one. So I'm going uh, to notes. Still... He is looking abysmal as he is fighting off basically six heroes at one time. Next up, Ian. Awesome. So how far away is Mangle Maw from me at the moment? He hasn't moved from where he got up. Mm, he has not moved from where he's gotten up. So I believe at this point he is approximately, because there's no longer Oliantari in the way, I'm going to say 30 feet diagonal. Great. I'm going to take my first action to move 15 feet towards him, leaving 15 feet in between us. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll move 20. Why not? Uh, and then um, Woodwar, as he does so, as he's running up, he grabs from his pouch what looks to be like the cap of this mushroom, and he just swings his hands together to clap. And basically, you just see spores start spilling out of the thing. Um, I am going to cast um, Fungal Infestation, uh, <laughs> which um, I need to roll to hit. Uh, dirty 20. <laughs> dirty 20? Is that with a plus one from Rufa? Nope, 21. With and that Rufa. will hit. That will nice. hit. Nice. Yes. Okay, good. Um, and... See, make sure I get this right as a success. Um, it is persistent poison damage. So, uh, with a with the persistent, oh, it takes half of the damage from after the dice roll, I believe. Yes. So, uh. To start off, he takes nine damage and uh, persistent. As far as that, if he doesn't make his pet, his uh, saves, he will take half of that, which is four. Um, okay. And is that a fortitude yeah. save? It is a fortitude save. Okay, I can do so now, correct? Yes. Okay. What's the DC to beat? Oh, I guess that's the thing. It's the critical success. Sorry. Uh, that That's where I'm basing this off of. So he could be taking more damage. Um, 19. 19. Yes. He fails by five. So great. 
Uh, So that's a success, correct? Yes, sir. Great. And so he will take half of the persistent poison damage. I rolled a nine, so he'll take four persistent. All right. I've already factored that in. Uh, On his turn, he will try to uh, end that. Next up, Michael. All right. You have Leontari and Mangle What are you going to do? All right. Um... How far away am I from uh, Woodward now? I'm just curious. Uh, I believe you said he was 20, 20 feet. feet. Yes, yeah, so he's about 20, 25 feet away from you. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. First, I'm going to do, what do you call it? Uh, devise a stratagem. Because okay. that's how investigators attack. Mm hmm. And I get it. Instead, I, instead of my strength, I get to use my intelligence. 25 on that and on that also activates my known weakness again Mm -hmm. so which is eh, not that great this time only 13 who are you rolling against uh mangle maw or this time this time mangle maw okay 13 total unfortunately the plus one stop there but yeah the hit is still solid you said it was a 20 what now 25 25 25 that's not a crit but that is still a hit Mm mm-hmm and I am now gonna roll my damage. Uh, this one is, I'm gonna use, let's see, that's one action to use my, well, device was free because it's part of my case. Mm-hmm. So my first action is, does interact count as one or not? Yes, interact does count as one. Okay. My, using an interact action to, with my free hand to pull out my sling. Okay. And using the, I'm using the sling to attack Mangle Maw, so. Okay. I get attacked uh, from a range basically. Sure, roll damage for that. Nine. Okay. As and you... I got two yep. actions, I believe, still. All right. Do the other two actions. Um, let's see. I'm going to attack Mangle Maw again with the sling. Okay. Roll the hit with a minus four. I imagine the sling's a finesse. Mm-hmm. Agile. Okay. Go ahead. Twenty-two. That will hit as well. Roll damage. Four. Okay. What are you going to do for your last action? Move as far away as I can with my remaining action towards Woodward and Alona, but keeping away from the op- attack of opportunity from the Antari. Okay. So I'm going to say you bank right. Uh, well, my mental right. Cool. So as you fling these two stones, at Mangle Maw, you see them hit that little fleshy lip between his exposed brain and his skull, and it starts to flay. It starts to flay like some really cheap leather breaking on an old shoe, and you see blood and brain matter start to drip down his goggle eyes. He is beyond bloodied from that salvo of two strong shots to his face. That being said, it is Mangle Maw's turn. Mangle Maw being quite angry. He's going to run through the cow trips. Roll damage for that for me, Michael. You activated my trap card. Time to die. All right. Uh, I- see ya. One, two. I don't know. I was just saying, I mean, exposed brain really wasn't the smartest choice. Well, exposed brain and then hopefully tripping on the cow traps with that exposed brain would also be fantastic. Okay. Um, three piercing damage, one persistent bleed damage, oh. and um, gets a minus five foot penalty to speed. They're so powerful for something you just drop out of a bag. They're so right. strong. There's just one action... You just drop it and boom, you've got it. Okay. Okay. All right. So he he starts it as he's as he's like kind of hopping in place. He then just just runs through super fast, and you can just see this bloody smear as his feet have just hit the caltrops and just kept running, 
just dragging his 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 bloody feet across the ground. As he does, he runs up the woodwork. Hold on, I gotta get the math. Woodwork, what's your AC? My AC is written on my sheet. It's a 16. Okay. He runs up to you. He's got something outstretched in one arm and something else in the other. He pops the one. And as he pops it, you can see it surging through his arm as his wounds start to seal up a little bit and he heals himself for 10 HP. As he does, he runs up to you and then just overhand lobs whatever was in his hand at your face. Okay. In midair, the green liquid starts to fizz and turn a vermilion red. And it hits you critically in your face. Yes. I do have my shield action. Raise shield. Use, use it. As you yes. do that, you hear another voice shout. You little green bastard. You don't take the little man with you. And suddenly, this, like, golden light of Morel with a purple flower just rages as he says, Stand down, you frog! And Mangoma says, You're going to take ten less damage as your shield and Morel's imposed shield Great. prevent this. Okay. So, scarcely hitting. 1d8. 2d8, 3d8, 4d8, depending on how bad the pluses are, I can survive this. Okay. Not factoring the two shields that are now trying to keep you alive. Mm. It's 31 fire damage. When the okay. two shields pop up in front of you, you are you are taking 21 fire damage. I now, can deal with that. Who is within five feet of Woodward? I think I'm just standing by myself at this point. How? Because Rufa took off. Him? Yeah. Yeah, you took off. You went, you went past me. Didn't you run back? Oh, that's right. You went way behind him. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, like, I, I was trying to GTFO as far as I can. Because all around Woodward is the angriest fiery conflagration just in this giant area, roaring fire. You will also be taking two persistent fire damage until on your next turn you can beat a basic fortitude save. Mangalmaw didn't save his, so we took both those persistent damages. There we go. <laughs> I was like, eh, just in case, I want to make sure that he's taking the damage that I gave him first. Very valid. So, Mangalmaw blew that in your face for about 21 fire damage. Kill himself for 10. Leontari is still pinned by Morel. He is going to make an athletics check to break out of Morel's grasp. He grabs Morel's foot and he starts to lean up like he's doing a crunch with Morel's foot on his chest and he starts to lean and he, as he says, Morel, Arcesian of Acadia, you are inconsequential. Morel looks at him and says, I am very important and slams it back to the ground and you will address me as captain, you green bastard. And with this boot on his, on his chest, Leontari is still pinned. He loses the rest of his turn. Top of the fourth round? Elona. Mm-hmm. You lead the charge. What are you gonna do? No, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied. I'm a horrible liar. Sam. Oh, I was wondering, but then I was yeah. just like, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Look, that's my secret, Sam. I never know what I'm talking about. Me either. <laughs> All right, so Ichi, Seeing Morel pin um, 
I, I just, his name just gone. Levantari? Lavantari? Leontari. Leontari. Ichi is stoked. She's so happy that he's doing this for her. And it's, she just takes that ax and tries to go straight to the torso and take that, see if she can take that guy out. I'm going to use a hero point for that. Because that would have been a one, and we're not. We're not rolling with ones tonight, y'all. Oh, very much. Very much better. Is there still a plus one on um, to hit with him? Regrettably, not this time. Uh, the investigation can be continued, but he is prone, flat-footed, so there will be a minus to his AC. Cool, that's a 24 to hit. That's not a dirty crit, but that still is a hit. All right, let's beat him up. Okay. Good old calculator. We've got our rage damage because she is glowing and angry. <laughs> Retribution axe damage. I hate orcs damage. And I think that's it. That's a 16 points of damage. You slam the axe into his torso, drawing it back. Monster blood starts to pool and fill. He's almost dead. I'm going to take the, uh, the penalty and try again. Okay, hold the hit. Be a minus five. She just yells, "Die!" <laughs> okay, 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 okay. That's gonna be. Let's see. We want. We have minus five on that. That's a twenty-two with a minus five. How much was that again? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. That hits. Yeah. I just I just want to know. Roll the damage really fast. I'll be right back. Okay. What's the funeral going to be like for Leon Tari? I don't know if he gets one anymore. He was my favorite child, favorite child at one point, but now maybe one of those puppy urns. Oh no. Well, he did Here, save let's us. See. He saved us before he came back. Mm. Not Alana, this one. he just punched you in the face. Or kneed you in the face. Yeah, but that's because he's been brainwashed. It's not his fault. He's, I think he's been rebuilt. Faster, he's been, yeah. Stronger. <laughs> it's a Leontari 2.0. Yeah. I was thinking that. <laughs> With no memories. It's not his fault, though, that he's 1,000 orcs compact into one body. That has to be uncomfortable in there. It's got to be a shit ton of crazy glue. So much. Get them all to stick together. Or the duct tape. Or the duct tape. So much duct tape. I wonder which voice would be, like, most prominent out of that thousand. Oh. Surely there has to be all their voices in there. See, I would be mad if I had 1,000 voices in my head. I mean, I I'd get it. Things. Yeah, right. it's a party. Yeah, it's a party yeah but there. if you got them all convinced that what you're doing was really cool, you'd have like your own crowd cheering. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, which is pretty sweet. Team. Reap Psyche just said, "You've got to put his ashes in a lo- in a llama urine. Then when they hand it to you, you can yell, a llama. He he's supposed, supposed to, to be dead." dead. <laughs> uh, so what was the damage? <laughs> that okay, was. Back. 17 points of damage to our dear dear friend on the ground there. Okay. Tell me the tale of how you kill the Antari. Okay. Ichi's been seeing him beat up Morel and then seeing Morel not letting it get him down, literally, and putting his foot down, literally, and that deep down inside is she looks at him and she's just like inspired in a way that she hasn't really been 
he was just a dude before, but now he's like a cool dude. You know what I mean? So she has the rage flowing through her and she knows that she feels in her heart that Morel's holding him down just for her to take him out. So bam, the first swing goes through and she can tell it's just about there. So she gathers all her strength and the rage is just vibrating through her and all her might grass straight through his torso. You chop him clean in half. And the two body parts, the top and the lower half, just kind of slide out from the dramatic impact. Uh, and as they do, you can see Leontari slowly shrivel. And his head is the only thing that's not shriveling, as it seems to almost pop off from his neck. And he starts to speak in another voice. I can see you, heroes. This unit it is not good unit at all. But I am coming. And I will see you on that day. <laughs> Transmission over. And with that, Leontari's face eyes roll back. His mouth goes slack as his face melts like slime. Off in the distance, you hear a voice. You made him angry. <laughs> I said to you, boys, I never thought I'd see the day when Korokos would actually be angry. And you see Manglemaw take two vials, slam them above his head, and they enter into his brain. And unless you guys want to go late, that's where we're going to have to end today's episode of Edge of Legend. <gasps> I mean, I'm cool though. It. Are I'm you down. Cool? You're down? I'm Everyone, are you sure? Hey, this is normally, I, I want to make sure. I work 9 to 5, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get up at 6.30. Exactly. That's this why is we're a good cliffhanger. It. So that's why we're cutting it. No complaints. So Holy. without further ado, as he clashes these two bottles, you see Mangle Ma's body start to grow and twist and contort into another super goblin of his own. And when we come back next week, the battle against Mangalmal rages into part two, the beast of bad science. So we're going to say our goodbyes nice. now. And I hope that you guys have enjoyed today's episode. It was awesome to have you all here in the chat. Without further ado, let us say our goodbyes, starting with Mr. Michael Powell. I don't know what his voice is. Mr. Michael Powell, like please uh, tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hey, everybody. I'm Michael Powell, a.k.a. Mr. Kapow, and that's also my social media handle, which is M-R-K-A-P-A-O. And also, you can find me on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Michael Powell does stuff because I do a lot of stuff, such as my new series on Facebook, which is called A Mighty Need, where I talk about toys and et cetera and tell you where you could buy them. And also got a YouTube channel called Fantastic Tales of Adventure. And on Thursdays, I am on Toyzilla Network talking about toys uh, on the show called Toyzilla Live at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Awesome, possum. Next up, uh, Ian, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. My name is Ian, and on the internet, I play the Bearded Scald. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter and our Discord by that name. Um, if you are interested in checking out anything else I or my fabulous friends do, check out our Discord. I'll be taking pictures and dropping stuff in there, the art sitting behind me. Also, I uh, have a small business that I run with my fiance called Witch and Heathen. If you guys want to come check us out, that's witchandheathen.com. And uh, we are going to be doing a uh, update with our candles this weekend. Uh, it'll be 3 p.m. on Saturday. Come check it out. Awesome. Watch it, watch it. Uh, Sam, as the person who got the killing blow against Legion Leontari, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Uh, hello, I am Sam. You can find me at Hey Sam Sterling on the internets in all the social media places. I'm making TikToks now. I made one today about 
um, sadistic DMs. Not that I know anything about that or anything. So yeah, go check it out. And that's all for me. Awesome, awesome. Sydney Rubino, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Oh, gee, it me. Hi, my name is Sydney Rubino. You can find me everywhere on the internet at Sydney Rubino. S-I-D-N-E-Y-R-U-B-I-N-O. Yep. And I realized um, I do have a TikTok and my username is Sydney of Hightower. But if you look up my name, I'm, I still come up as the first person because that's still my name. So you can find me literally everywhere. I also make TikToks and I'm on Twitter actually mostly now. Um, so if you want to talk to me there, uh, uh, do that. I, oh, I also have a YouTube channel. Um, I forgot this week because this week I didn't upload a video because my shotgun mic crapped out on me. But normally... I upload a video every Tuesday where I read folklore and fairy tales and we discuss the morals and we, you know, read stories that people normally wouldn't have access to and we talk about them. So if you like stories, come over to my YouTube channel, which is also just my name. Great. Kylie. Who are you? Where can we find you? Sweet, sweet internet, etc. Hello. Hello, I am Kylie, or I go by Kai. Um, oh, there goes my notebook. Uh, when I am not here on Wednesday nights, I am still on Twitch on Monday nights, uh, playing a homebrew D&D campaign called The City of Promise on Dragons, Dragons and Dreamers, uh, where I play a half-orc, quarter-orc fighter, she's not quite half, um, where we're trying to figure out why these children are taken to this asylum place and, and, and locked away by a Crime family, come join us. Awesome possum. Uh, well, my name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGaw. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Come find me. Let's have a good time. Uh, when I'm out here Wednesdays, you can find me here Tuesdays, uh, 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. with my man, Mr. Michael Powell. Uh, we just uh, had an episode yesterday. went live. Uh, we did live about uh, East Asian representation in media and TGRPGs and video games and, and all kind of great stuff. It was an amazing chat. Uh, so we opened up. If you know anyone who wants to potentially join us and talk to us about Southeast and Southeast Asian, please let us know. We want to make sure everyone can be heard so that everyone gets to hear heroes that they deserve uh also on that uh on a different topic uh tomorrow thursday um i believe myself and sydney i believe uh Maybe. we are and michael, and michael and and michael so we're gonna be having a great old time with our friends life action role play uh about the same game time eight o'clock i believe we're just gonna have a chill time we're gonna have some mimosas and just like kick back and be friends because mimosas and chill right. yeah yeah yeah. Mimosas and chill because sometimes you gotta celebrate, you know, that you can relax. Uh, last but not least, May 9th, my game that I'm running with Jasper's Game Day, go uh, jaspersgameday.com. Uh, it is an amazing charity. You can buy and raffle get a ticket to come into my game. You can come watch it, it's there to uh, raise uh, suicide awareness and suicide prevention. Um, if you meet, if you meet me for the game, we'll have a one shot, we'll have a great time. Uh, and I think without further ado, um, we're going to be raiding as a special request by the Bearded Skull himself. We're going to be raiding uh, an individual uh, by the name. Oops. Uh, I'm going to get this right. Real Chaos Zero. We're going to be raiding Real Chaos Zero. He's my best friend. Aww. Yeah, I was very excited when he said he was going to be streaming past 11 tonight. I was like, oh, I think I can do a thing. Nice. Hey, He's playing uh... Baldur's Gate 3 at the moment. Oh, nice. Oh. I've been wanting to, been wanting to do a list play with that at some point. All right, so we're going to be raiding soon. Uh, yes, uh, Aeon Ko. I'm going to butcher your name. I apologize, Aeon Ko. Uh, we're going to get you that Discord link eventually. Um, don't you worry. Um, and without further ado, thank you so much for coming tonight. We're going to be raiding in three, two, one. Be safe.